Are you serious? Are you serious? Welcome, guys, to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Bagley, and we are in for a powerful, powerful broadcast tonight. There's no question about it. It's going to be a very prophetic one. Revelation demons. There's a lot of stuff going on. You're seeing some of these revelation demons already at work affecting world leaders, affecting global institutions, affecting Christian leaders, affecting the common man. And we don't even realize that these dumb, demonic forces, these demons of hell are all around us. I'm Pastor Paul Begley, and tonight is Primetime Live. Mike from the world is going to join us tonight. We're here in Birmingham, Alabama, live. We've been in the conference with Bishop Larry Raglan and his wife Sandy, and uh, we've heard some incredible uh, preaching and worship that has gone on here. It's been really spectacular. So glad you guys are with me. Let's put a shout-out right now for www.noblegoldinvestment.com. Now, they want you to use the link, www.pastorpaulgold.com. That's www.pastorpaulgold.com. Or pick up the phone and call them, 877-646-5347. That's 877-646-5347. If you're concerned about your financial future or your situation, with your retirement, your 401k, your IRAs, your savings accounts, uh, the value of your of currency, and uh, you want to know if there's other options or what is the smartest move. I think you should get some advice, if no for no other reason, at Noble Gold. Go to www.pastorpaulgold.com or pick up the phone and call them at 877-646-5347. And uh, they're giving away of five ounces of pure silver coin called America the Beautiful for everyone that qualifies who sets up a gold or silver IRA. So if you want to find out more about this, go to www.pastorpaulgold.com. All right. G great to have everybody here. I couldn't believe how many people were waiting. There was almost 500 people waiting for me to push the button and go live. Uh, I really, we had a great time. With our uh, over at Patreon uh, this afternoon, we had a one-hour uh, meeting with uh, uh, Patreon subscribers who came and were in the Zoom call with us, and everyone's invited. When you get one of those invitations, just come and join us live. But if you missed it, no problem. It's posted, and it'll be right there on Patreon. Heidi, did a, Heidi and myself both were on with you all. We, we talked about some big... Uh, important thing, some of it which we want to ask Mike from around the world tonight. Uh, demons, revelations demons. What does that mean? It means this is what the enemy, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers and spiritual wickedness in high places. The prince of the power of the air, Satan himself and his minions who have been here on this planet the ancient ones that we've heard Mike around the world refer to. We're going to ask Mike about that again. We want him to go into depth, not hold back. What are these entities that live deep in the heart of the earth or in the depths of the ocean? Can he explain? Can, he, can, we, go, can we go on to another level of explanation? Well, you guys know I'm, I wrote a book called Revelation 9-11. It's already uh, you can pre-order it already if you go to Amazon.com or BarnesandNoble.com or BooksAndMillion.com or, or, you know. But go to Amazon.com, let's say, and if you purchase it, of course, it's going to ship on April 2nd. It is, uh, along with my co-author, Troy Anderson, two years' worth of work and research and prayer and spiritual download from the Holy Spirit on how to put together a book on exactly what's happening in these end times. And uh, there's no whole bars in this book. And I hold nothing back. I mean nothing back. All right. Uh, a couple quick things before I'm going to read some scripture here just a second. But the, the sun's magnetic poles are disappearing, according to 
reports. Also, we've had major earthquakes the last 72 hours, especially Japan is reeling and rocking like a drunkard over there. I mean, it's unbelievable. Even Taiwan was hit. And India uh, had a Himalayan lake from so much rain, a, a lake in the Himalayas overflowed and created a tsunami coming down out of the mountains in India. 19 people are dead. Over 100 are missing. It wiped out 11 bridges. It's an unbelievable event happening in India right now. And a typhoon has smashed uh, into Taiwan. It hit. It was the strongest windstorm in the history of Taiwan. The storm was a Category 4. It's done extensive damage, and now it's going to, in the morning, Saturday morning, it's going to hit China. And they're also going to experience this incredible storm. Also, Hurricane Felipe tomorrow morning is going to crash into Maine and then, uh, and then on up into Canada. Also, the entire Northeast, you're going to experience almost a replay of two weeks ago of rain, you could have flooding again in Manhattan. You could have it in the, up in Boston or in those areas in the Northeast. So once again, we have a replay. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Um, and so it, we got that going on. And also there's been a discovery, guys. 42 pairs of of rogue objects they're 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 flying they're 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 out there in pairs 42 separate pairs so there's 84 of them and they're they're small they're not suns and we don't think they're planets and they're in the constellation of orion and the james webb telescope has spotted them and it's a galactical anomaly. Are they, are they, I mean, and is this part of what, what's coming? Or is this the sweet influences of Orion that the Bible talks about in the book of Job? When God says to Job, do you understand the sweet influences of Orion? Why in the world would he? He was telling Job, do you understand the treasures of the snowflake? I mean, who are you to question me, Job, for I am God? The Bible says there are things in the sun, the moon, the stars, distress of nations with perplexity. The sea, the waves will be roaring, and men's hearts will fail them for the fear that's coming upon the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. So we're, we're witnessing right now some extraordinary events in the heavens. And what's this? Oh, get this, guys. And then there's an ozone hole in the ozone over Antarctica that's three times the size of Brazil. What? Uh, I mean, this is incredible situation there. It's an incredible situation. We're going to ask Mike from around the world about that. And Hillary Clinton says uh, she's back. She's back. And she's talking about the deplorables. And she says that we need to be reformed. Those of you who claim to be, I, I'm a deplorable. I'm, I'm, maybe some of you are also, accept the fact. That, <laughs> I see you, Kevin Wilson. We'll play a song from Kevin Wilson or two tonight. So thank God. Good to see you. Yeah, Hillary says we're deplorables and we need to be reprogrammed. The deplorables need to be reprogrammed. Now, when I heard this, the first thing I thought of was FEMA camps. I thought of FEMA camps. I even remember writing my book, Mark of the Beast, RFID, in 2011, in which I predicted a bunch of stuff, or in, and it's a novel. It's, not a, it's just a novel, how the end times, it was an apocalyptic scenario. And uh, including, I said that the Pope of Rome would resign, and he did. I said there would be a Mark virus that would affect the world, and it has. And there would be something strange. Antidotes would have to be needed, and they're they're working on that, or they've <laughs> they've done that. And then there was um, 
that their FEMA camps would be used and that Christians, starting with the leaders and then on through the ranks, would be taken to FEMA camps to be deprogrammed. That's the exact words I used, deprogrammed. Now, I didn't use the word deplorables because Hillary hadn't said that yet, but uh, it's the same thing. And the reason I said that there would have to be camps is because, and they would, uh, and they would rank them based on how far people were gone, how strong they were in their Christianity. Were they, de- were they irredeemable? Remember when Hillary said that? Or could they be deprogrammed? So they'd be put into camps because they didn't want to comply with the new world order and the mark of the beast, RFID. That's radio frequency identification device or microchip. That's all in my book. If you haven't ever read it, you probably should. It's incredible. Uh, and it uh, will help you understand. And I actually um, explain what happens to Christians and different people during that period of time. We know the Lord's coming back. We don't know the day or the hour. We just don't know. We know he's coming. And he said, in an hour you think not, the Son of Man will come. So Hillary wants to deprogram us. And uh, we're going to be asking Mike about these underground entities, the Revelation demons. Matter of fact, can I read? Go to the book of Revelation. If you have it, please go. We're here in Birmingham, Alabama tonight. Last night, Rod Parsley preached an incredible message. Seriously. About an hour and 45 minutes, this man just poured his heart out, and the anointing was so strong, and the word of God was so he quoted, he must have quoted close to 100 scriptures. I mean, I mean seriously. Um, and I talked with him after the service, uh, and we were talking about how these scriptures come to you when you're preaching, because he had no notes with him. And uh, he said, you don't know what scriptures you're going to quote when you're preaching because you just don't know. And then as you're preaching, the anointing comes and they just start flowing out of you. And I said, well, that same thing happens to me. And, he, and uh, of course, he and I were kind of cut from the same cloth. He got saved when he was eight years old. I got saved when I was 10 years old. My, my mama made me um, memorize 200 memory verses at the age of seven during the summer time of my seven, seven years old. Um, and I had to learn five a day or I couldn't go out and play. Um, and those now come back periodically and they come in the right time. So there's no way you could do that. Uh, it's supernatural. So again, uh, we, he, he and I were talking about that a little bit last night, but his message was insane. It was just unbelievable. And so was Miles Rutherford on Thursday night. Uh, I mean, on uh, Wednesday night, Miles Rutherford out of Marietta, Georgia. Wow what preaching he did. So uh, we're here in Birmingham. I'm preaching Sunday morning here in Birmingham, Alabama. If you're out there and you'd like to come, please do it. I'm preaching Sunday at Solid Rock Church, uh, Birmingham, Alabama. Uh, Bishop Larry Raglan is the pastor along with his wife, Sandy. And the crowd and the people are wonderful people down here. Sweet home Alabama down here. There's no doubt about that. Okay, sweet home Alabama. Uh, Let's go to Revelation. If you go to Revelation chapter 9 for a moment, here's what the Bible says. And Mike will be joining us very shortly. When he opened the seventh seal, excuse me, chapter 9, and the fifth angel sounded, I saw a star fall from heaven into the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. He opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. Now, what's incredible about this and this webinar that we're getting ready to have, which is going to be on Friday the 13th, October the 13th, the final countdown, Road to Revelation. Get your tickets now. What? It's next Friday. We're one week away. We're one week away from what will be. The one of the, most of you will say to me after we're done, after you see this webinar, you'll say, Paul, Pastor, thank you. This was the most eye-opening understanding of the book of Revelation I've ever had in my life. I've never seen such an assembly of speakers it divinely inspired. The whole thing from, from the time God said to do it, 
to the to the title of the webinar, to the speakers that were selected, and the messages, and and to the chapters I assigned each one. All of it was divinely inspired by God. Get your tickets tonight. It's at my website at paulbakeleyprophecy.com. That's paulbakeleyprophecy.com. Let me read. He opened the bottomless pit. There arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth. And upon them was given power. And the scorpions of the earth have power, just like they have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither anything green, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Leave the Christians alone. Just go after those who have the mark of the beast. This is what he's saying. And to them it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months, and their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when he striketh a man. And in those days shall men seek death, and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. This is incredible. What technology did the beast do to these people that they couldn't die? They would wish they could die, and they couldn't die. What in the world? I mean, it's what it says. And shapes of the locusts were like the horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were as it were the crowns like gold, and their faces were as faces of men, and they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. These, these demonic entities that crawl out of the bottomless pit were hellish. Hellish in attitude, hellish in in inflicting pain, hellish in their assault on humanity. They had breastplates, as it were the breastplates of iron. The sound of their wings was the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. They had tails like the scorpions. They were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue, Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue, hath his name, Apollyon, which means the destroyer, and the word Abaddon means the place of destruction. So this is the destroyer from hell being turned loose with a band of demons. And woe is past, and behold, there came two more woes hereafter. And the sixth angel then sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. What angels are those? These are fallen angels. These are demons, higher ranking demons than the scorpion demon, demons that were released when Apollyon was set free. So Apollyon basically has to set his generals free. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year. For to slay the third part of men. In other words, if you add that up, that's one year, month, um, one day, and one hour. So it's 13 months. Hell is unleashed upon man. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000, thousand, and I heard the number of them that's 200 million and i saw the horses in my vision and them that sat on them having breastplates of fire and 
jaceneth and brimstone and the heads on the horses were as the heads of lions and out of their mouth issued fire and smoke and brimstone. And by these three was the third part of men killed. A third of the world will die in this war. Killed by fire and by smoke and by brimstone which issued out of their mouths. These are the demons of hell, folks. These four entities that get turned loose inflict unimaginable, insuperable, horrific events upon humanity for their power. And this isn't the wrath of God. Oh, by the, oh, by the way, oh, no, 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 no. We're not, we're not even talking about the wrath of God. This is not the wrath of God. This is the wrath of Satan. This is before the wrath of God, the judgment of God. This is demonic forces from hell that are about to be released. And when Hillary says she wants to take all the deplorables and reprogram them, go read it for yourself, my friend. This is what the Bible says they're going to do during the mark of the beast period in Revelation 13. When this beast, this whore that rides this beast, inflicts upon the, the, the saints, makes war with the saints, and even overcomes them. victory for the devil and Daniel saw the same thing he was so sick he had to lay in a bed for days he said I saw this beast there was none like it and it made war with the saints so we have the same entity in Daniel that's here in Revelation this is, this is Revelation's demons okay all this time that you've been alive uh, that you that are living in this fig tree generation You've never had, you've been, you were chosen to live in this end time generation for a reason. God has confidence in you that you can survive, be faithful, walk in, not in fear, but in faith and prepare for the events that's about to come on the earth. And you watch it every day on your news. Who ever seen a time like this? They just, they just got rid of the speaker of the house. Never happened in the history of this nation, 250 years. We just impeached the president twice. Never happened in the history of this nation. They just asked the president, the former president, he's got to go to trial four times during an election year. That's never even, th no, no one's even, no president's even ever been indicted of anything, let alone four trials. And yet he was just asked if he wanted to be the speaker of the house. He could have said yes. If he had said yes, they would have put him in while running for president, while going to four trials. But he decided that that's a little too much on his plate, so he went in and said, let Jim Jordan. I endorse Jim Jordan. And of course, Jim said, all right, I'll do it. And Steve Scalise, another good guy, real good guy, said, I'll do it too. And so they're going to have a little vote, and somebody's going to come out. Jim Jordan's a personal friend with Yehuda Glick, went up on the Temple Mount with Yehuda Glick. And Glick, of course, is a personal friend of mine you start wondering how can these divine appointments and alignments start setting up for such a time as this I, I think there's something serious that God's hand is behind it all and at the same time God's hands working the devil's hands working the demons of hell revelations demons this why you want to get this webinar you want to get this webinar it's next Friday it starts at six o'clock and it will be, there will be more, you will learn more about the book of Revelation in this webinar than you've ever, Mark Biltz, are you serious? Dr. Dave Robbins, Mondo De La Vega, Ricky Baker, Bishop Larry Raglan, I could go on and on. Incredible information. Michelle Danyi breaks down the seven seals, the seven trumpets, and the seven vials for you. Oh, it's going to be, it's incredible. So tonight, I'm going to play a song. Mike from around the world is going to be here. We're going to be asking him about these entities that are in. When he said, remember when Mike said that there are entities in the heart, in the earth, ancients that have been there for a long time? He's talking about the revelation demons. <laughs>
God, I'm so scared For this crooked generation You even find faith in the earth When you bring down revelation Forgive us now The sins of our youth Worshiping the idols that knew Everything but the truth Teach us how to uncorrupt our minds Show us now what we still have the time We need you, Yeshua Holy, holy, hallelujah We need Yeshua, we need Yeshua we need How many saved here tonight? We abandon everything to follow you, our King. We throw our gold and silver in the stream. How much will we see before the fire falls? Lord, could this really be the last altar? of our hearts anoint us with your fiery love as the praise and worship starts we need you Yeshua holy holy hallelujah that's right Rebel Mom the last altar call Yeshua Oh, that's right. We need you, Yeshua. Because this is the victory generation. You are the last day generation. Israel Hall wrote the song. He helped me sing it. And, of course, it's on our album, Harmonize and Prophesy. Kevin Wilson's in the building tonight. We'll play a song with him in just a moment. But let me just read, finish reading here in the ninth chapter of the book of Revelation. Revelation's demons. Okay? This, listen to this. We're going to talk to Mike tonight about those very entities, the demons that live in this earth, on this earth, in the heart of this earth that will be released soon, like real soon, okay? Like I'm talking <laughs> ASAP soon. But uh, the sun's magnetic poles announced today disappearing. They're disappearing. The magnetic poles, in other words, are having some kind of, the, the sun is in the process of doing a flip, some type of uh, magnetic pole shift and it's going to cause the solar maximum to get extremely violent which is going to definitely affect the earth and not in a positive way 
but it will be fulfilling prophecy where it says men will be scorched by the sun and gnaw their tongues for pain, and yet they st- and they will bless of him God and still will not repent. We have a typhoon. It just hit t- Taiwan. It was a Category 4. It was the strongest wind to ever hit the nation of Taiwan. And yes, I said nation. I don't care what China says. And then the Himalayan lake in India was overflowing. It flooded so much rain that it came crashing down out of the mountains like a tsunami. 19 are dead, 100 are missing, 11 bridges washed away. This is in India. A hurricane is going to hit in the morning, Maine. What? That's insane. Did you say Maine? Hurricane? Felipe. Felipe. We'll also go into Canada. It's a repeat of two weeks ago. Earthquakes are going off everywhere across the, the world, and especially Japan right now. Um, there was a pretty strong one up in Anchorage, Alaska also. 42 pairs of rogue int- or, uh, objects were spotted by the James Webb Space Telescope. They don't know what they are, but there's 42 of them, and they're in, they're in pairs. And they're in the constellation of Orion. Are they planets? Are they little stars? Are they, what are they? And they're traveling like, I guess, like a, a, a binary systems, each one of them, but there's 42 pairs of them. And um, they're in the constellation of Orion. And, you know, God said to Job, that, do you understand the sweet influences of Orion? Was he referring to these 42 pairs of objects? What was that? And then there's uh, the ozone. The ozone above Antarctica has got a hole so big it's three times the size of Brazil on our planet. The ozone layer over top of Antarctica. So there's something seriously taking place here. And we'll also ask Mike about Hillary Clinton calling, uh, you know, going back and talking about the deplorables and saying that uh, the deplorables all need to be reprogrammed, deprogrammed, reprogrammed. Okay. Is it time for the FEMA camps? Is that what is I wrote about that in my book, Mark of the Beast, RFID. Christians were rounded up, leaders first, put in camp and to be deprogrammed and if, if not to be put to death uh are we going there underground entities we're gonna be asking mike around the world he keeps talking about him he's mentioned it before we want him to go deep into this subject because i'm reading tonight out of the book of revelation on revelations demons also i want you to we're going to mention the emergency broadcast test uh we talked to mike about it a little bit last week but we're going to ask him now that it's happened, can he go a little deeper in the conversation? And so we're going to do that tonight. The Bible says in Revelation chapter 9, in verse 19, for their power, talking about these demons out of this bottomless pit, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and, their, and they had heads, and with them, they do hurt. And the rest of the men, which were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not worship devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, their witchcraft, the occult practices they do, nor of their fornication and sexual immorality, nor of their thefts. They come to kill, steal, and destroy. Satan did. Jesus said, for the thief cometh not, but for to kill, steal, and destroy. But I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Can you say amen? Mike around the world is going to join us tonight. We're going to get into the Revelation demons. 
Road to Revelation, final countdown, Road to Revelation webinar is next Friday. So get your tickets tonight. Be ready uh, and so that we can start getting those lined up so that right at 6 o'clock next Friday, the 13th. See, I'm not afraid of Friday the 13th. I'm gonna, I hold a webinar. Satan can't have that day. You know, this is the day the Lord has made. I, I'm going to rejoice and be glad they're in. Matter of fact, I'm going to expose the demon of darkness. I might as well do it on his highest satanic day or one of his highest satanic days, Halloween being his highest, and all these Friday the 13th, they, these belong to God. They don't belong to the devil. He, he don't, unless you give it to him, and I'm not giving him nothing. He's stolen enough. Um, now, there's more demons in Revelation. Go with me, if you will, to the 11th chapter of Revelation. Now, remember the Apollyon? Remember that demonic force from hell that came out of the pit in Revelation 9, 11? Well, now let's take a look at Revelation eleven seven. 7. And now we have these two witnesses. The third temple has been built. If you start reading the first part of this chapter, it doesn't have an outer court. That's for the Gentiles. The temple has been rebuilt. And there's these two olive trees the two witnesses are preaching in Jerusalem and the whole world's hearing their message. And that's the, and you know that's because social media is covering it, it's streaming everywhere. And the kings of the earth hate these guys and they're trying to assassinate them. But the assassins die every time they go to kill them. Here's what it says. Uh, in verse 3, go with me to uh, Revelation eleven three, and I, I will give power unto my two witnesses and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred three score days, cloth clothed in sackcloth. So they're they're lamented, they're mourning for the earth, they're preaching, they're begging people to repent and to come to Yeshua. They are they've been sent by God to deliver the final hour message to humanity. And the Bible says that these two men are the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devour their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. And these have the power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over the waters to turn them to blood. And they smite the earth with all plagues as often as they will. These guys are preaching and signs and wonders follow after them. Manifestation of their proclamation. Prophetic word, they speak, it happens. They're led by God walking in full faith. And the Bible says in verse seven, and when they had finished their testimony, the beast that ascended out of the bottomless pit, which I just told you was in Revelation 9, he shall make war against them and shall overcome them and kill them. So this creature, this entity, this ancient demon that's been in the earth and still there right now waiting for the key, waiting for someone to pierce the veil. Is it CERN? waiting for an angel from heaven to come and unlock hell's gates, releasing this demonic demon, this destroyer of darkness with a band of demons hissing and stinging and inflicting war and pain to the point that a third of the world dies. This is going to happen, folks. It's the book of Revelation. It has not happened yet, but we're on the brink of it. And these this beast goes and kills the two witnesses. And look what it says in verse 8. And their dead bodies, the two witnesses, shall lie laying in the street, the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, but where our Lord was crucified. So we know it's Jerusalem. And we know the temple is in Jerusalem because we just said he just, they just made the temple. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations shall see their dead bodies three days and a half laying there. CNN's covering every bit of it. Giddy. As a matter of fact, 
it says they will see their dead bodies. The nations of the world, so it's on television, it's on satellite, it's on YouTube. And they will not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And the Bible says, and they that dwell on the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry celebrations. They shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwell on the earth. But after three days and a half, I said after three days and a half, the spirit of life from God enters into them and they should stood, they stand upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them and they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither, look out. And they were raptured. They ascended into heaven in a cloud they heard the voice from heaven. They came from the, these, these two guys were resurrected and then raptured. And you know, it's, it's sort of a little bit of a mini uh, uh, moment from, uh, from Thessalonia where it says the dead in Christ are going to rise first and us that are alive and remain will be caught up forever to be with the Lord and so shall we be with the Lord. It's going to happen here in front of the whole world. And the Bible says, and that same hour, there was a great earthquake and a tenth part of the city fell and the earthquake slain of men, 7,000. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to God. This is the moment when a massive harvest of people repenting and coming to Jesus Christ happens. The whole world knew all about these two witnesses. They saw them. They talked about them on cable network news. It was everywhere. Was, you know, they were on the cover of Time magazine. They were on people wearing T-shirts saying they're the most, America's most wanted. They were hated by Europeans. They were hated by Africans. They were hated by Asians, they were hated by the kings and presidents and foreign ministers in the United Nations, and they just kept preaching and preaching the gospel of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, and people were being saved, and they sent plagues, and plagues hit the earth. Finally, and they tried to assassinate them, and they couldn't kill them, and finally, the beast that I've wrote, told you, the revelation demons kill them only to kick their bodies around in the streets for three and a half days while the whole world celebrates. And then the God of glory, the spirit of life from God raises them from the dead. Are you serious? And calls them up to heaven and raptures them in front of the whole world. And an earthquake hits and kills 7,000 people in Jerusalem. And the rest of the city realizing that they have just watched the hand of God and that they were two men of God and that God rose them from the dead and as they watched them go up into the sky and they seen the, they repented and they gave God glory. And the world, there'll be one of the greatest moments of salvation the world has ever seen will happen at that day. But before we can get to that day, we got to deal with revelations, demons. And if we should be alive and see this, and I'm going to say, I don't know, I'm not, I'm going to say, that's probably why I wrote the book, why it's coming out, Revelation 9-11, why God told me, he told me, he showed, he came to me in an open vision, and uh, I've been working on it for two years, and it's coming out April 2nd, just before this, the solar eclipse that's going to happen on April 8th, and God says, release this message because it's about to happen. These words came from the Lord to me. Paul, write a book, Revelation 9-11. It was in red letters. And God spoke to me and said, it's about to happen. It's upon mankind. It's about to happen. So Hillary can talk about reprogramming deplorables all she wants. There can be False Christ and false prophets shall rise, and they are going to deceive many. 
we're going to hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled by any of this smaller stuff. For nation is going to rise against nation, kingdoms against kingdoms, famines, pestilence, diseases, plagues, earthquakes in different places. These are just the beginning of the sorrows. Great persecution that comes. People will betray one another, hate one another. Some of us will be thrown into prisons or maybe into the deplorable camps for re-education or re-indoctrination re or reprogrammed, whatever they want to say. And because iniquity abound, Jesus said, the, the love of many will wax cold. But he said, but he that endures unto the end, the same shall be saved. And when this gospel that I'm preaching tonight is preached unto all the world for a witness unto all nations, then shall the end come. And when you see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet standing in that holy place in Jerusalem, on that temple mount in the Holy of Holies, when the Antichrist himself, the man of sin, the wicked one that Paul talked about, the son of perdition, the mystery of iniquity, when he walks into the third temple and into the holy place and performs an abominable, an idolatrous act upon the mercy seat of the, of the Ark of the Covenant, when you see this abomination of desolation, Whoever reads this, let him understand it. Whoever's listening to my voice, may you understand it. He said, then you better start fleeing into the wilderness. You better get, don't even go down in your house and get anything. You got to get out of there. Those of you who are living in Israel, those of you living in this, the nation of Israel, it's time to flee to the mountains. Because pray that it ain't the winter time. Pray that it's not on the Sabbath day. Woe to the women who are pregnant and those that are nursing small children. Dear Lord, for this is a time that's coming on the earth like it never has been before, nor ever shall be. I'm just telling you what it says. I'm paraphrasing. I'm quoting half of it, but I'm telling you exactly what it says. Should we be scared of that? Should we be afraid of Hillary? When I'm telling you that there's demons, Revelation's demons are about to be released. These little uh, imps and, and things that are running around now that are affecting people, guys, brush that off in the name of Jesus. Don't walk around in fear about some emergency broadcast system. Let me sound the alarm. The Bible says, cry loud and spare not and lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgressions and the house of Jacob their sins. It's no time to be afraid. It's time to be brave. And... Uh, God's going to deliver his people just like he's done how many times he brought the children of Israel out of the, out of the great bondage. He delivered them. The same God that did that, he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, changeth not. Is anybody here? Thank you. Can I get an amen? Because I'm not giving you a, some man's theory. I'm not giving you somebody's three points and a prayer some little pamphlet. I'm not walking around giving you a little pamphlet. I'm telling you what the Bible says. This isn't some theory. This isn't trying to twist it to make it fit something you want. I'm just telling you what it says. Are you serious? People are not ready. Kevin Wilson, will you sing for us? Can you sing for us? Mike from around the world is going to be here any minute. What are these entities in the heart of the earth? Can he tell us? Just like you, I spent a lifetime trying to pay a debt I could not pay. You just like a you. Couldn't born enough to write the wrong things I've done Then somewhere from a better place Yeah, I heard somebody say Whoa, the blood is enough Said it's so cleansing tough This life can't water down. It 
Blood is enough. Sing it, Kevin. Spend everything I own trying to find a way to ease my troubled mind. Yeah, just like a you in a troubled world, peace I could not find. Then one day. Much better place. Yeah, I heard somebody say, Whoa, oh, the blood is enough. Said it's so cleansing tough. And this life can't water it down, no. And it all said. Oh, yes. That which flowed from his feet and hands. hands. <laughs> Lord, so cleansing touch. But the blood is enough. Oh, yes. You can't water it down either. I love that line. Because the blood is enough, folks. I mean, it's absolutely enough. David R. Thank you, David R. I found some great people. That's Kevin Wilson, and the blood is enough. Kevin Wilson's in the chat room, everybody. Give him a shout-out. Hi. And uh, also, guys, you can get his music. We have all, we have four of his albums available at my website at publiclyprophecy.com. If you don't have it, you can also go check out Kevin's website. Uh, and uh, somebody post that for us. And Because uh, he, has, he has more than just the four albums I have. So you can go there and get more and find out more about where he's going to be and, and, and he's his schedule and maybe you can be in person at one of his concerts uh and worship services that he's in you'll be blessed amen to that uh let me say real quick now mike from the world's going to be here any minute this is the last night of the feast of trumpets excuse me feast of tabernacles 
this is, and some of you haven't got your Feast of Tabernacle offering in, this would be a perfect time to do it. Matter of fact, you know what you're supposed to do on the last day of the Feast of Tabernacles? That's a day to be happy. How do you know that, don't you? You're to be happy. She's reading something over there. Okay, but you, and and it's it's a day to celebrate. So uh, know that it's so awesome. And what a, what a time! How God is so good. Uh, Mike from the world is going to join us uh, tonight. You get your tickets for Revelation. Road, excuse me, the final countdown. Road to Revelation. Unbelievable. Uh, Mike from the world is insane on this one, uh, and so is. Uh, Bishop Larry Raglan, be honest. And so is uh, Mondo de la Vega, and uh, and Ricky Baker, and those are two of Jim Baker's adopted sons. These guys are amazing. Doctor David Robbins from End Time Ministries. He's uh, Doctor Irvin Baxter's son-in-law. You will you will uh, you will be stunned at what God revealed to him about the. In the book of Revelation. So there's just, I can't name everybody at the, but just look, there's just so many good ones in there. So don't miss this, okay? Don't miss this. Um, if you go with me to the 16th chapter, we're talking about these Revelation demons. While this is going on, guys, current events don't stop. The Speaker of the House was thrown, out, thrown in the street. We never had this happen in the history of this nation. The, one of the presidential candidates running, former President Trump, indicted with 91 felony counts, four different trials in the same year he's running for president, was just asked if he would like to be Speaker of the House. And he turned it down, said, no, I wouldn't put Jim Jordan. Jim Jordan's a friend of Yehuda Glick's. Was on the Temple Mount with Yehuda Glick just about a year ago. Uh, uh, absolutely loves Israel, loves America, loves the Lord. And Glick's a close friend of mine. I start thinking about how God is just connecting the dots and putting things together for this end time. I believe, I, believe, I really hope, I, you know, Steve Scalise is another really good guy. If he gets Speaker of the House, I'm fine with that. But I really would like to see Jordan get it, but that's okay. I'm not in charge of that. I'm, I'm more in charge of souls of men. I'm not, it's not my job to run the nation. My job is to preach the gospel. And uh, because I hold the souls of men in my hand. I'm responsible. There's some of you watching tonight. I am responsible to tell you the truth that if you die in your sin, Jesus said where I'm at, you cannot come, okay? But if you would repent of your sins and confess the Lord, believe in your heart and confess him as your savior, you shall be saved. And then I'm, I'm here to tell you that your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life that you'll be filled with the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost. You should be baptized in the water and in the fire. Matter of fact, we got somebody to baptize. Heidi Wynn. Oh, you can't hear me. We got, we got to baptize some people. When? The 22nd. The 22nd. We got a lady coming from, where's she coming from? North Carolina, North Carolina to be baptized. She's going to be baptized on uh, Sunday morning, the 22nd. So if you want to get baptized the same day, come on. Um, down to the villages in Florida. I'll be preaching this Sunday at Solid Rock Church, Birmingham, Alabama, with Bishop Larry Raglan and his wife Sandy Raglan and all the wonderful people there. I mean, amazing. Uh, so I hope if you can uh, be in attendance live, I'd love to get to meet you. Come up and introduce yourself. Walk up to us. Let us know who you are. We're happy to get to meet you, and it's it's going to be amazing. That's this that's uh, Sunday, uh, this Sunday. Uh, I'll be preaching there. So, but we've had the sun's magnetic poles are disappearing. Now, this as a matter of fact, I could just read this for you. Now Mike's going to be here in any moment. Let me read to you what it says. This is crazy. But the sun's magnetic poles are disappearing. Sun is about to lose something important. It's magnetic poles. In other words, the sun's about ready to have a pole shift. 
And according to NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory, they revealed a rapid weakening of the magnetic field in the polar regions of the sun. North and south magnetic poles are on the verge of disappearing. Is that me? I'm so sorry. Of disappearing. Um, and uh, this will lead to a complete reversal of the sun's global magnetic field by the end of the year. Perhaps before the end of this year. And what does that do? If this happens on the earth, what's it do to the earth? There will be widespread alarm because past reversals of our planet's magnetic field have been linked to calamities ranging from sudden extreme climate change to even the ex an extinction protocol. In fact, a solar physicist at Stanford University, Todd Hokusimia, and I said his name horrible. This happens every 11 years, but we don't normally lose the poles. We go from minimum to max uh, solar cycles, but we don't usually have pole shifts on the sun. But they're disappearing, they're weakening, it's going to happen. And it's going to affect the earth with calamities, whatever that could be. I mean, we need that, don't we? No. And while this is all going on, simultaneously, there's a typhoon just smashed into Taiwan. It was the strongest typhoon in history and with winds, the highest ever, and, and it was a Category 4. Done extensive damage. It's going to hit China this weekend. And while that's happening, there was massive floods in the Himalayas which a lake overflowed, creating a massive tsunami in India, killing 19 and 100 people are missing, 11 bridges wiped away. And I'm sure those, uh, I hope not, but those totals are going to rise. And while that's going on, there's been earthquakes in diverse places, especially a, a ton of them in Japan. And while that's going on, uh, the ozone over top Antarctica is so there's a hole in the ozone over top of Antarctica that it's the size of th the size of three Brazils, okay, three times the size of Brazil, unbelievable. And then the James Webb Space Telescope has just identified 42 pairs, 42 pairs of objects in the, const uh, in the constellation of Orion that we didn't know existed. We don't know if they're little suns. They don't think so. Are they little planets? We don't know. We don't know what they are. And we're facing things now. The Bible said there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves will be roaring. Men's hearts are going to fail them for fear, for looking after those things come upon the earth for the powers of heaven to be shaken. And then we're going to see the Son of Man. That's what I'm looking for. Coming in the clouds with power and great glory. So when these things begin to come to pass, he didn't say cry and whine. He said, look up. Lift up your heads because your redemption's drawing nigh. So in these apocalyptic, cataclysmic, catastrophic events, is the soon coming of Jesus Christ. And get this, let's go to Revelation 16 with these Revelation demons that we're going to be asking Mike from the world about that have been in the earth. And we've shown you where they get released in Revelation 9, how they try to assassinate the two witnesses in Revelation 11. And then we tell you about some more of them. There's the, and also the four that were in the Euphrates River. Now, you, the, the, the Apollyon let them out, and that created World War III. And how close are we to that? But get this. Look what it says in Revelation 16. It says in verse 12. Well, let's go to verse 10. It says, The fifth angel poured out his vial upon the seat of the sun, 
of the seed of the beast, excuse me, and his kingdom was full of darkness, and they gnawed their tongues for pain. So now the beast is in his seat. This is happening while the beast and the mark of the beast is in process. And here's what's going to happen. A sixth angel, open, uh, angel pours out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, and the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. So the river Euphrates right now is dried up. And it says when the river Euphrates dries up, these three unclean spirits like frogs will come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, out of the mouth of the false prophet, for they are the spirits of devils working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of great, great day of God Almighty. Here comes Armageddon. Behold, he said, I, Jesus said, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watches and keepeth his garments, lest he, be, he walk naked and they see his shame. And he gathers them together into the place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. So the demons of Revelation are about to be released. But so is the king of kings and the Lord of lords. He's about to be released to come. John said, I saw a number that no man can number coming down from heaven. Bride adorned for husband. And that horse rider, that white horse rider had his hair as white as wool. His eyes were as a flame of fire. His vesture was dipped in blood and on his thigh was inscribed the name faithful and true, the word of God. We are coming we are in the end times. We are witnessing these events. And uh, we'll be asking Mike from around the world about these revelation demons. We're also going to ask him about Hillary's comments about the deplorables need to be reprogrammed. Um, she's already told you who the deplorables earlier when she ran for president in 2016 she already told us who the deplorables were christians conservatives and believers in the constitution and believers and people who believe the bible who don't walk in the liberal agenda she says that we're we should they put us all in a basket of deplorables irredeemable now she says, well, maybe they can be, some of them, reprogrammed. Is she talking FEMA camps? Or some type of, who's she deciding, who lives and who, who gets to, I mean, what is she talking about, reprogrammed? What does she mean? Um, and, and Mike, what about the emergency broadcast system test? We're going to ask Kim, now that it's happened, what did it all mean? Uh, he told you it didn't matter last week when he was with us. He said, don't matter if you turn your phone off or not. It's not going to matter. It's all, it's, it's already done. But, but let's ask him a little deeper. What was it? And what was its purpose? And what does this mean? We're going to try to get that from Mike, if he can share that information tonight. And also, we've got a lot to pray about. Here recently, here on our publicly prophecy our online church, which is an incredible, you guys are amazing people. But just in the last, less than a month, we've had four children that uh, have come down, two of them, I think, with brain tumors, one with leukemia. One little child had massive heart surgery. She had heart, heart surgery. She's like six or seven months old or something, right? Just less than a year. And then we just got another one that we're praying for. Praying that there's nothing there that's on the spine of this individual. Anyway, these, these are just children. They're all very small, young children. They're part of the children of our online church. And a 
grandchildren for online church. And there's others. I mean, there's many. Uh, and these are just the children, not counting the adults. The amount of people that are sick with cancers and tumors and leukemias and different types of brain tumors and different types of things, the number of people, the sure volume of requests coming in to us for prayer and for blankets to send out to these folks is more than we've ever had in this 13 to 14 years that we've been online. It's increased exponentially, hasn't it, Heidi? And they need prayer. And we need you folks to agree in prayer and, and, to, and to lift them up in the name of Jesus because the compassion that we have for each and every person, for every family, for every person watching, we care about you. We care about your soul. We be, care about your life. We care about your finances. We care about your physical body. We care about your families. We want you to have the best that God has. And we want to be there. When you're hurting, we're hurting. When you celebrate, we celebrate. We all do this together. This is the body of Christ. This is who we are. And that love cannot be duplicated, cannot be imitated. It's real. It's the love of God that lives in the heart of every one of us. And so let me just pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, before Mike gets here, Lord, I just pray that you will. By your stripes, we are healed. You said, a merry heart maketh like a medicine. And this is the Feast of Tabernacles, the last day of it. And you said us, we're to be merry, we're to be happy. Lord, you've provided the children of Israel when they came out of Egypt. You, you, you provided those tents, those booths that they could live in. You provided water flowing out of a rock. You provided the manna that fell from heaven. You provided the shelter in the time of the storm. You never left us. You led us by the cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. And, and when plagues came, you would send the high priest Aaron running with the censers off the golden altars to stop the plague. You've provided when no, no one else can provide. So we ask you, God, to heal these children. We ask you, God, to heal these children, to heal these children for your glory, to heal these children, to heal some of my followers out there that are that really need a touch from you, Lord. They need a touch from you, Lord. So we're just asking you to heal them in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. And amen. So there's a lot of things happening right now that we've never seen before. And there's things I'm sure Mike knows that, that I don't know about that's all already in the works. So we're not going into this time we're not going into the, the fig tree generation. We, we are not going to be caught off guard by anything and everything that gets thrown at us because we know what the word of God says about it. We are prepared. We're preparing ourselves. We are a bride. We're making ourselves ready. And the Lord is coming for us. And greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. And Jesus said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. But I will go with you all the way, even to the end of the world. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. For take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, 
and you shall find rest for your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Isaiah said, Come, let us reason together, thus saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, I'll make them as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, I'll make them as white as wool. The Bible tells us that God's love is unmeasurable. The height, the depth, the width, you can't even measure it. For we're saved by grace. For, for by grace are you saved through faith. It's, it's not in ourselves. It's, it's a gift of God, not of works, lest any man would boast. We've been bought with a price. He said, you are the, a royal priesthood. You're a holy nation. You're peculiar people. You're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He told us, he said, I'll make you the head and not the tail. You'll be above and not beneath. You'll be blessed going in and going out. Blessed in the city and in the field. The Bible tells us that he'll put a shield of faith to fight off all the fiery darts of the wicked. This is a God that cannot fail. This is, the, this is the creator of all things who gave his only begotten son that whoever would call upon his name should be saved. We serve a great God. We serve a great, great God. And because of him, because of him, we can have life and have it more abundantly. My friend of the world will be calling any moment here. We're going to ask him about these revelation demons. We're going to ask him about... Uh, the emergency broadcast system test now that it's over. We're going to ask him about Hillary and the deplorables. Oh, we're going to ask him a lot of questions. These entities that are in the earth. Mike from around the world. How are you, Mike? God bless you, Pastor Paul. Doing okay this evening. All right. Thank you, Mike, for a uh, change of plans, doing a Friday night instead of a Thursday. Not a problem. Appreciate it. Uh, I'm here in Birmingham. We've had a couple of wonderful services. I'm preaching this coming Sunday down here. And um, I say down here because I'm usually up up there in Indiana. But, uh, right, right. Anyway, Mike, the emerg- uh, there's a lot we want to ask you about. I, I titled this Revelations Demons because, you, okay. you, you know, it talks about Apollyon coming out of the pit. It talks right. about uh, these four entities released under the Euphrates <laughs> River. Uh, these locusts, uh, demonic forces that, uh, you know, so, so there's some, there's some demons in revelation. Um, and we want to know about, uh, who they are, these entities. I think you've mentioned, I know you have in the past that some of them were seen maybe by some of the soldiers in Iraq in the, in the war, maybe other people have encountered things. Can you, can you go into that? These ancient, because according to revelation, they are ancient entities, I call them yes, revelations demons. Mike, your thoughts? Yeah, they are. Well, first of all, what we see, what we see of the world and what we know of the world is just a tiny, tiny, minute little piece uh, that we observe. Everything humanity knows is in a tiny piece, even of this earth. It's just a, a tiny, minute piece of the earth. And, and of course, uh, throughout time, my time and others' times, stories right people hear stories but uh, i'll tell you something fast ball when you start to face reality of what this world in other words what's on this world uh that's where life changes and we've been very fortunate uh, to 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 be uh separated from these things but a time has come uh, you know too many incursions between humanity and, and other things on this earth have not ended well, ever. And so uh, it's been a great fear of a few agencies and governments and things of that nature to at a time like this would be coming in the first place. Um, but it's inevitable. And speaking of Revelation, where they come from, the bottomless pit, uh, some from the Euphrates uh, River. Yeah. Just not a good thing. Uh, one of the, for example, one of the tunnels to one of the tunnels to a very uh, horrific place was right there in Egypt, and it was it was uh, I believe they poured something like two hundred tons of concrete into a yeah same thing happened in Russia 
uh, I believe they poured 100 tons of concrete into a tunnel so nobody could ever go in there. Um, what? Because it does not, you know, it's one thing if you would just see a, a creature or something like that, I mean, you know, people can deal with that. But that's not what this is. You're, you're, it's something outside uh, the imagination. So the reason they poured, something that. Uh, so you're saying the reason they poured these uh, concrete was to seal off, to seal these portals from in the earth. Had they? Is it because they had already seen, or somebody had seen, or? Oh yeah, it's because you know there were casualties, and and due to the sheer nature of what was down there, right? If it were just a, well, you know, to. If it were just a being, big deal. If it were a big animal, big deal. Right. If it were a you know dinosaur or something like that, big deal. An old person, no biggie. But that's not what they ran into. Um, but that is that's just not the deal. And by the way, that concrete can't really stop them. It's a deterrent from human beings. So right? It's just to keep the humans from going down in there. That's right. Because they won't, you know, they, they wouldn't come back up or they would be spoiled. They, they use the term spoiled. You know, a human being will be spoiled. And just to give you an idea of that, no one who has ever, uh, no one who's really ventured into these places has come back untouched. No one. And there are some people uh, who have knowledge of certain things in the earth. And past of all, they're, they're just, you know, they're just utterly terrified out of their minds terrified so did did, did also is there is there portals like that <clears throat> in iraq or in the middle east as well everywhere well that was a tunnel uh that was a tunnel um over the right and they know they they there's an entry point to some very ancient things because you run into some very strange geology very strange things it's one of the reasons why nasa abandoned um their, their search uh or exploration of the deep oceans they just abandoned that they won't tell the world what they lost and what they actually found but overnight they abandoned the entire operation wow so these are ancient. So whenever the Bible says, you know, that uh, these entities are in the in the earth and they're coming out of the earth, they get released, whether it be Apollyon and he releases these other four and it creates what looks like World War Three, maybe. And then we got these unclean spirits that come out over in the river Euphrates and these other four. So. So now that we know they're there, there's no denying they're there. And now. We're getting the reports. You've seen, have you, you know, some military uh, personnel have actually encountered these entities. Oh, yeah. What, what, what oh. was that? What did they say they seen? What it is they, they, they said it, they experienced? Well, they had to actually, after seeing, after going there and, and seeing what they saw down in the tunnels, um, they had to spend a lot of time with, with um, priests. They had to, they had to spend a lot of time away from their families. Um, it's almost like they were overcome by a rage, uh, a type of mindset that's just unnatural. And uh, wow. they didn't they didn't trust anybody. When when somebody has some type of encounter like that, they don't trust people anymore. They don't they just don't trust people um, because being in the presence of one of these things is uh, one of those things. You know, one of the older ones is is. It's just not a good thing. You can actually, being in the vicinity, you can feel some of the, um, you know, the environment they must have been close to. And it's just not good. Um, and that's worse than, you know, some people talk about meeting people with black eyes. Yeah. The peop the folks with black eyes are yeah. nothing compared to what's underneath our feet. It is nothing. Yeah. And I mean, I, I actually uh, did a video, I think, in the last, within the last week on these black eyed children. And, and people felt very uneasy feeling and very creepy feeling, and, the, and they, they, they felt like yeah. they were not really real children. They were maybe something else. But you're well, saying they are something else. So, and, well, but, but they're nothing compared to those. Uh, and 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 it, you're talking an entire, an entire, um, you know, just just dozens after dozens after dozens after dozens 
of these things underneath the earth. And when, when they break free, when they can get free, when they're moving and fully autonomous, uh, humanity has no defense from that. None. No defense. When you're in proximity with something like that, by the way, it's almost like being caught in a nightmare. Yeah. In a dream, you, you don't have control over your body. I can tell everybody right now, those things, uh, they can take instant control of your body. Right? They can... They can put you in a coma state um a person described it like this pastor paul that if if these things have the ability to put you in an instant state like a coma but but in this state you are being tormented they can do anything to you in this state that they want to but no time is passing yeah. with everybody else okay. Right? okay so that means suppose a person froze they were they were looking at one of these things for an hour Right. To that person, that would be about, you know, two to ten years of torment. Whoa. OK, so, 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 that, so in other words, facing the, so time dilation, things would slow way down so slow that during that one hour of time, it would feel like ten years of time to that person. It would to feel like person. ten years to, to everybody else. You know, maybe an hour would pass, maybe less. So nobody outside of that individual would have comprehension of what actually happened. And so they have this ability. Um, people have been witnessed changing right before everybody's face. In fact, uh, truth be told, there are a lot of people in higher positions that are afraid to go against them because they have, you know, they give demonstrations of what they can do to people, right? Yeah. Now, again, they're, they're, some of these people are absolutely tricked into believing that there's no escape, there's no way out, right? Yeah. There is a way out, is Christ. Amen. But they're tricked into not even approaching Christ. They won't even talk about Christ. They won't even have a Bible in their homes because they're frightened of the penalty. And Satan being, you know, these evil things are evil. Yeah. I, again, I don't think humanity understands what evil is. If they think a human is evil, they haven't seen evil. Evil is is, is with no mercy, no mercy, no grace, no, you can't reason with it or anything else. So do these and, individuals um, that have these encounters, do they get debriefed? I mean, do is there a place they're taken in? I mean, years, I, years, it takes years to recover. Wow. It doesn't take a, a day or two days or three days. That takes years to recover because they have to essentially be put back together. That's lots of counseling. <clears throat> they keep keep those people away. They don't want to go near their families. They don't trust human beings. They yeah. do not trust human beings after that point. So in, and some people just go absolutely insane. They, they it's, it's very sad, but they're locked into a, something they can't escape from. So in Revelation, as we were reading earlier tonight before you came on, Revelation 9, it says that uh, when Apollyon comes out of this pit, then it says, then the sixth angel in verse 14, this is Revelation 9, 14, said the sixth angel, <clears throat> which had a trumpet, loosed the four angels which were bound in the great river Euphrates. Um, <clears throat> and they inflict something for an hour, a day, a month, and a year to kill a third of the part of men. So... This is pure evil. So the, the, when they come out, are they going to possess people and cause them to inflict this kind of casualty? Is this like World War III? Because it does mention this 200 million man army. Uh, what do you, how do you see that working? Though that, though the ones that are under the power of the four angels, they actually have troops. And those troops are physical. Okay. Uh, yep. You could say physical and spiritual, but they're not. They, they, they are different. Right. Think of, uh, I don't know, one of these cryptid things that people talk about a lot that they can't, you know, you shoot them. They don't die. You, right. Uh, right. They stink to high. heaven. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, something like that. I do know this, that uh, if one is killed, two more take that one's place. What? How about that? So if one falls, two more just pop back up and take their place. Whoa. And um they, 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 their stories, um, you know, they're, they're carved stories that they, they marched upon the earth uh, against many bands long ago. But these things are almost like in a stasis, almost held in stasis, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. um, and it's in, believe it or not, humanity is feeding the return of these things. And, mm -hmm. and all mm -hmm. elements are changing for their time. They knew their time was coming. 
um, they knew it. And uh, once Christians, um, once the power of the Holy Spirit is not the vanguard of the earth anymore, because here's something I, I strongly believe a lot of people do not comprehend, is that the Holy Spirit inside of a person is the presence of God in this earth by way of us. Right, his power works through us. Amen. Nothing can breach or overpower the Holy Spirit within a person. Nothing. Amen. Which is why a lot of people are preserved. But we've got it so good, Pastor Paul. Yep. That we nitpick, right? Uh, we nitpick. Uh, and and now true uh, opposition, Satan's real uh, things are coming back. And and when that happens, when people are introduced to that. When they find themselves in the absence of them, even the sinners out there, they, they have such a merciful time. They they can still sin because they're covered by those who believe around them. Right, right. right. If you're in proximity, those that evil cannot breach, it can't surpass us, so it can't get to them. But so imagine if the count of believers is diminished mm, in the earth, mm, then they're in trouble. They have right. no defense. Weapons right. are not going to defend them. And although it would be nice if it were a conventional war, I don't believe that's going to be conventional because these things are nothing but ruthless. Yeah, it's going to be a slaughter. Let, let's let's try uh, another subject. There's a couple more. Uh, I want to ask you about Hillary and her wanting to reprogram the deplorables. But, but before we go there, the emergency broadcast system, we talked yes. about it last week. And it happened, um, mm -hmm. and I did hear a little something you said um, on one of your broadcasts. And uh, so, can you elaborate? Now that it's happened, we're still all here. What does it? Right. What does it mean, Mike? What is the real purpose of what's going on? Well, everything is being everything is being connected. That's a ping test, right? Okay. Yep. Uh, so everything is networked. Everything is, and in fact. A lot of people did not get the tones they thought they would get. They got the message, right? They did. They didn't yeah. get the tones, but everything was pinged. In fact, uh, ten weeks before that event, they started the pinging, right? Okay. So the tones and the pings were going out ten weeks prior to the other day. It was already, already, so already had been even started. Even before that, yeah. Twice per week, twice per week, they were testing everything out see here's your phone your telephone is it's a device but if you know what a hard drive is and a processor is just imagine the hard drive and processor at a central station right right there smack dab in the middle of of the fcc or governmental institutions or corporate institutions that run all this stuff right that's what type of device you have it has assembly power right yeah. The, the new tank has assembly power, but as far as the actual processing power and all directives come from a different system. So essentially what you're doing is holding the handset to a phone. That's what you're doing. Okay. And all everything here, right, is radio tied or radio linked to a, another system. So you have a part of a device, not the whole thing. You okay. Just have one part of it. So this so when is people say this is the, the, the sad whole part device. Is, this is right. This is just right. one of the components of the Thanks. global right, right, part. Right. Okay. And it's very hard to explain because a lot of people, I don't think they understand the technology, like covering it up, taking the battery out, and this and that. That doesn't good. It right? that won't do any good. Right. Plus, if you didn't have a phone, right, uh, somebody within three thousand feet of you would, and so whatever it transmits to receives. You would have to stay away from people. Have a three thousand a three thousand foot radius is huge. You would have to have a three thousand foot radius, where nobody had technology. Period. And of course, that's not going to happen. No. So everything was tested by way of the network, which means when they pinged every single device, it took um, uh, an amount of time to get from that central system to your phone back to the central system, and so by that. They have a general idea of latency. Now, AI can make up for that latency with predictive um, mathematics or predictive computations. For example, it can anticipate everything you're going to do on the phone with about, I believe it's 98.6% accuracy. Now, it may be minuscule, you may not know it, but before you press a number on your phone, uh, AI can anticipate you're about to press that number and it will go ahead and engage. So your devices operate very smooth. Everybody should notice that, right? Compared to utilizing your device 
many years ago, and now your device is very smooth, right? Just like right, having a conversation right. around your, if you have a conversation around your phone, you may find an advertisement on your television that matches your conversation. Same thing. So this is a, a sort of an active system, a right. system that they that they would consider uh, an alive system, right? Not a living system and a live system, which means everything and every component is active. That's to your vehicles, to your appliances, uh, to your watch, phone, everything. Right. My phone went off. I can tell you, we were sitting in a restaurant, me and Heidi and uh, um, Pastor Dave Bushfield and his wife, um, and and uh, may, might have been a couple other people. I can't remember, but all of a sudden, at two eighteen. Uh, you know, I, I knew it was supposed to be around 220. At 218, all all the phones in the entire place went off. And they were toned. They were toned. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, you right. know, and then right. the message and everything. So the whole nine yards. So we did experience that here in Birmingham. Right. Um, so you're saying, don't worry. Should, we shouldn't panic over this, what I'm trying to say. No, it didn't. The, the, it was a passive type of signal. Right. Yeah. Um, lots of people took that signal apart before it was ever sent. They took it apart after it was sent to see what it was. They, they know every single frequency within that signal. It's been multiplexed, put back together, taken apart, tested and everything else. It was a benign signal. By the way, that same signal at a higher octave, much higher octaves had okay. been sent out at least uh, 88 times prior to that test. Right. If anybody wants to know, it is the low frequencies you cannot hear that can be damaging, not the ones you can hear. It's the ones you cannot hear that are damaging. Wow. Um, they affect your biology. Right. And so those are the signals you, because you can't hear them. There's really nothing anybody can do about it. But uh, those can be damaging anyway. With these phones, now they have the data that came back. Now the system. All, all that data that came back yeah. can now be put into a finalized product. Okay, so everything, ah. everything is to be wired yes. by the close Connected. of this month. By the by close, the close of, this, of month. this month. We're, this month. Oh, is it now? Is it also being linked to Starlink? Uh, is that it's part already, of it? It's already it's already done. there. It's yeah. done. That was done the other day. Right, it was done a few hours after the test. You know. Uh, okay. All the latency and everything. Now, how many uh, nations are involved in this in besides the United States? Well, it's worldwide. Oh, okay. They, they they can't tell you that. They can't tell you it's worldwide because we have, you know, people yeah. are patriotic, and that right. wouldn't, you know, right. That wouldn't be too good. But just keep in mind, the International Space Station is still international. I China know. still works with American. A lot of technological projects, and we still work with Russia. A lot right. of tech projects, and this that, and the other. So, uh, but we. We, as Christians, we know what that's for. That's for the master system or the, that system that's in the ocean right now. It's near very cold waters. It is about, I think it's about 2,000 feet uh, below the water. It's a, a supercomputer down there. Okay. Well, it's more than a supercomputer. I'll just say a supercomputer. And the water keeps it cool, right? So, so long as the poles are cool, it's going to stay cool. And it does all the computations. They've been working on that system for the last... 52 years. What? So it was a pretty big facility. Yeah. It's underwater. Nobody can get so to it. So the facility itself, it. the facility itself is underwater in the oceans. Yeah. It's in the ocean. And it stays cool. In the way. ocean and cold. Very cold. It's very cold. Wow. So it's a, uh, it's what they would call a permanent, uh, a permanent facility, which means because nothing can really destroy it. It's not near vol uh, volcanoes or anything else. Right. It's it's cool and underwater. It's very protected, signal protected. Uh, it's protected from radiation, all that stuff that, you know, nasty stuff that can tear up a computer is protected from. And so everything is everything is rerouted into that, which is why they put the new Atlantic and the new Pacific um, cabling tunnels down there to run all those uh, light conduits through, right? All the fiber optics and everything else. Is this D wave? Are these D wave these computers? Are these? Are we? Are we uh, well, they're they're similar to that, but these are basically global defense computers. Okay. Global defense would be, uh, is of a different nature. Let's put it that way. Yeah. It's of a very different nature. Um, they are nuclear powered, so power. Yeah, power is not a problem. They're going to stay, you know, powered up for a very long time. Right. Yeah. Our, and our, so now they're going to use them. Yeah. And so the system has, has been uh, connected. Yes, it is. And yes. Uh, we're going to another level. We're getting ready to go to another level. 
uh, and move yeah, a lot quickly. of a lot of agendas are going to move quickly. Very I, I quickly. Very quickly. Yeah. Well, your your thoughts on uh, and I want to get to about the sun's magnetic poles that are disappearing and and there's some things happening here and what does that mean for the Earth? But just real quick, we we've had a strange week. Uh, the Speaker of the House first time ever got thrown out by his own party, basically. Right. Not his own party, but, you know, the, the, they made a pact with the devil kind of deal. Um, the president of the United, former president of the United States was asked if he would like to be Speaker of the House, which he could have. But uh, at the same time, he's been impeached twice, and now he's got four trials to go through while leading in the polls. Okay. None of this makes sense. Um, Hillary has come back out, and she says that the deplorables need to be reprogrammed. Is she... Is this a hint of what's coming? Is she just blowing off steam, or is there another she's just, agenda? She's speaking the sentiment of ousted individuals. Okay. Hillary Clinton is is steeped in, uh, you know, witch stuff. Right, just so you right, understand it. Right, right. She's a, she's something else, and she serpent in the rainbow. There's a book out, the serpent and rainbow, that tell you exactly what they're. The Clintons are about, but anyway, I think you. Yeah, they're they're highly influenced, yeah. Yeah. highly influenced. But but she just speaks the sentiment of some of the powers that are there. Now, unfortunately, Pastor Paul, what you'll see is is an exchange of at least two or three more people are going to be thrown into the meat grinder. Um, oh. Speaker of the House, Speaker of the House, right? Right. Um, anybody can be Speaker of the House. Right. Well, not anybody, but you can be Speaker of the House so long as you do not go against what is popular among some of the hardliners. And unfortunately, we live in a time when people do not endure sound doctrine. They no, do not. Amen. Amen. Um, most people are living their lives by what is popular. I hate to say this on TikTok, Facebook, and all these, you know, all that yeah. stuff. They're living their lives what's popular. But, and they're not listening to anybody with, with a sound advice or sound guidance, unfortunately. No. Nope. Um, but they already know this and i'm telling you right now they don't care they don't you have certain people that do care right but the majority of them do not care so they the willfully are, are ignorant like the bible says they, yes they are willfully yes, they are. Yes, they are. would rather believe a lie and be damned they just already they warned they warned mccarthy the first time you do not if you try and save if you have a heart for the people and you try and salvage uh, or, or do something for the people they're going to say you're doing it for the democrats and you're going out the window Right. Wow. There are plants up there that there's still people out there that can get rid of some of the warlocks. I'm going to call them warlocks and operate up there. <laughs> they really are probably warlocks. Though. Well, there are a lot of warlocks, and they, I, I tell you this, they, um, they understand what's happening right below your feet, right? They understand what's happening. This is Revelation Demons. Yep. They understand what's happening with that. The, the power, whatever's waking up is waking up, Pastor Paul. Okay. And, and you know how in the Bible, if, if two or three are gathered together in the name of the Lord, right? Yes. He is there with them, correct? Yes, yes. Well, Satan loves to copy principles and just profane them. He loves to do that. And so where they, they get two or three together in agreement with the powers and authorities that are below their feet, the banned powers, the dark powers, and they give, uh, all of them give certain hand signals. You know that the... the um, the AOK signal where you're, where you're uh, forefingering your thumb yeah. or in a circle with yeah. your three yeah. fingers pointed up, that's actually a, a witchcraft sign is what that is. Wow. Right? And when you have your hand up, down to everybody watch this, if you have the two, your, your two fingers in the middle, if they are touching, but your pinky mm -hmm. and your first finger and your thumb are not touching, that's also a witchcraft sign, which okay. follows, which follows that little okie dokie sign. Right. OK. When they when somebody does that in succession, that is a mark. That's an actual mark. That's an agreement with some authority and they're they're cooperating with it. Now, it is very difficult to do that mistakenly. You have to purposely do that. Yeah. To make yeah. You have to force so, yourself to do, especially but, the but, one, the, the first one there. I mean, there you go. That, now, that was a little harder to do. But but now that people see this, they're going to see it every single day. Yeah. They're going to see it every single day and never be upset by who is coming from because we serve the Lord. Right. He Amen. knows what he's doing. Amen. And they, there's some there, a beast kingdom is rising and it just so happens it's rising in conjunction with these dark powers. Mm. They are 
they, they're going to be given their time. And the Lord does this. He gives them their time. Satan can't rise by himself. God gives Satan You're right. a, a season to operate, and then he's taken out of power. Yeah. But we have to, you know, um, if the, the whole guise of it is to see who loves darkness, if you think about it. Satan is a, the, the beast kingdom is a vacuum. And all it's going to do is attract darkness to itself. And if a person is pure darkness, they're going to love what that kingdom represents and join it. Um, but um, I'm not worried about that no. thing. You know, I'm standing spiritually. But Pastor, this UA, UAP business yes. is about to go to a brand new level. Peru is about to go to a brand new level. England is about to go to a brand new level as far as high strangeness is concerned. Tell, tell us and, about uh, this. Tell us about well, this. The UAPs. in Peru. United, uh, this in, in, unidentified aerial phenomenon. There have been more landings. Okay. Right. There have been, there's some video out there that is, it's not that fuzzy stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, clear, it's the more clear thing okay. you ever saw. And it's not a craft. It's a, um, clearly you can see the manipulation of the atmosphere. Uh, you can see right through a, a hole and see a whole nother system, if you would. Or a whole nother dimension, something. a whole nother dimension. There. Yeah, you see something like that. Okay. And but it's dropping off things to the earth. Is what it's doing, and then they then they leave. So you can see a whole bunch of that. You'll see. You'll hear the story in Peru about a um, uh, a maimed creature, right? Okay. You're going to hear about that. China has two stories they're going to come forward with, and a lot of people are going to go see. They have their own little special story with some of their pyramids that have been there for a long time. They're opening one up to everybody. It is, uh, that pyramid's active. It is very active. Was it, is it in Peru? Uh, no, it's, that one's in China. Okay. You're going to see world leaders go to China and they're going to see it. You'll see it. Um, but unfortunately, this is going to happen. This will gauge where people need to be and a war can ensue shortly thereafter. I can almost guarantee you it's going to seem strange because you think we'd fight for valid reasons. No, I believe that uh, a very dark entity is calling the shots now. Yeah. And and based on Christians uh, activity and what we fall for and don't fall for, uh, things will either escalate or escalate one way so or the, the prince other. of the power, right. you know, the prince of the power of the air. Lucifer is starting to activate. um uh, his end you time bet. plan, his his uh, uh, desperate war plan. You Would you call it a war plan against humanity and against Christ? Yeah, uh, his 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 war plan, tactical plan, war plan. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna enable it. He's he knows that when God will give him time. His his time. I mean, even in Revelation, he's right. given him out speaking great things and blasphemies. Yes, he can't do anything on his own. He's he's given that stuff. The but, legions, the legions, and the man Jesus cast out. They even said to him, "Have you come to torment us before our time?" That's right, because they're they're terrified of Christ. Right, and they're terrified of anybody with Christ in them. Amen. Right? That's good to know. But, but so that's right. So th that's why it's also good never to agree with I can't. Uh, no one should agree with darkness in this time. No. In this time, everything matters in this time. Never Amen. agree with darkness because darkness has made a decree. And if anybody decides to do something in darkness, they're already joining hands with something that has already done it. So then they're going to be in league with something else. So just, just don't avoid that step. Don't do it. Resist it. Walk away from Amen. it. Say no to it. Stand up spiritually. But this influence fastball is going to get stronger. And... As a consequence of that, everything will change. So the we earth need to. Is changing. Okay. Um, matter of fact, the sun is changing. Okay, let's talk about that because the sun. It's uh, there's an article out right now that said the sun's magnetic poles are disappearing, which could cause calamities on the earth. I just read that in one of the science magazines. Can can you tell us what? I mean, I understand solar minimums and solar maximums. So is is something about to happen here? Why would the oh, yeah. poles be? They know. Pastor Paul, they know we have an external influence outside of this solar system. They know it, right? Okay, yeah. Because that shouldn't even be an article. It shouldn't be a concern at all. But what they're identifying as the poles uh, beginning to change is that they're monitoring um, ions and everything else coming off the sun. But more specifically, some of the forces are being repolarized. Now, here's what that means. If the Earth changed its polarity right now, and mm -hmm. sent off a little tiny CME, it would destroy us. Oh. Just so you know that. A tiny, teeny, tiny, zero-class flare could destroy us 
if its polarity matches ours. As a consequence, solar winds are always hitting the Earth. Yeah. So here's what's here's what they're worried about. If the Earth cha- or if the Sun changes, it's it's pole dynamic. The Earth is going to follow in suit, which means our atmosphere, right? Yep. There are ions in the ionosphere. The ionosphere is that uh, is where the um, uh, uh, the aurora is seen all the time, where the little colorful yep. lights are. That's yep. an overlapping region of of, of space. Um, where people, it's in the lower part of the uh, magnetosphere that overlaps with the ionosphere. That's where you see all the auroras. Yeah. The ionosphere is charged, and it's, it's charged in a very specific way that it is almost like a magnet. It has a north and a south side, right? Yep. If the sun changes, so will it. Here's bad news about that. That's not good. Once that changes, everybody should know that ions... Um, ions and, and particulates change the electrical activity of cells in the brain. Oh, just so you know that. Okay, so stability of Earth is tied to the stability of everybody's brain. Right. So, so we're will like we're almost like if one the Earth or... is unstable. So we're kind of like one with the Earth. I mean, there, there's so yeah, you're wired. Yeah. Our brains are wired just like the the atmosphere is. Yeah. And when it changes, here's what happens: brain cells, um, when they become depolarized and then polarized again, uh, what happens? It, a person can be either alert or absolutely a sleeper in a coma. Right. The changing of uh, the, the that, that polarized state versus a neutral state can absolutely cause people to pass out and then wake right back up again. It can cause the difference between a person being absolutely depressed and happy. Yeah. Normal, yeah. Right. Cause isn't barometric yeah. pressure. Doesn't that kind of, well, this is, this is due to ions. Okay. Because if the, right now we have a negatively charged field around us, um, okay. um, a pretty constant field. If the sun changes, its poles, that field is going to change. So it's not going to be predominantly uh, negatively charged. We're yep. going to have a lot of chaos in the ionosphere. That's going to affect which our, is going a lot to of cause, It's going to cause a concentration of everybody to scramble instantly. Now, in a controlled environment, what that has done was put people in a coma. It also caused people to, to act out of rage. It also caused uh, ladies, it caused them to almost go through their uh, part of their m- mental cycle and physical cycle mixed together. It causes them to go through the mental part where their, where their hormones yeah. are not releasing correctly. Because any female out there who is not getting a specific hormone, uh, they become angry. They do. They become angry. Uh, and it's important for them to know this so that when it hits, they can override it, not make an excuse for the anger, but just simply say no to it. Um, males, likewise, can become highly aggressive. Yeah. Right. Yep. But during its transition, you're going to see people passing out all over the place. Passing now, out? Now, just imagine if a person is driving. Right? Oh, no, no, no. And, and all of a sudden, uh, you know, certain parts of the atmosphere hit this chaos level. Yeah. That that actual change uh, from being polarized to depolarized can cause a person. It absolutely can cause a person to be asleep or have wakefulness, right? Because all the potassium, calcium, magnesium ions are going to also alter. Mm. And we know what happens when you don't have magnesium. If you, if you don't have magnesium and manganese, you become irritated. You're in a yeah. bad mood. This, yeah. that, and the other. Yeah. Right. So all, everything that stabilizes us, that causes us to have high levels of empathy and compassion, this, that, and the other by way of the flesh, is going to be gone. So what happens to a person who does not have Christ during that time? Well, they become very vulnerable, very vulnerable. Right, because they're not born again spiritually. Right. And they have nothing to override the flesh. One consolation a Christian has is if they are a born again Christian, given a new spirit, their spirit can 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 outweigh anything that alters in the flesh. And they can actually correct the flesh by way of the spirit. That's by the power of Christ. 
Okay. So all they have to continue to do is have faith, and their body goes through a multitude of corrections. That's also been that is a total that, advantage. Believer and non-believer. So yeah. the believers have a tremendous advantage because absolutely God will regulate. Absolutely. He he can fix the places. He said, "I make every crooked place straight, every valley I'll exalt, and every mountain absolutely. I'll bring low." So in other words, he could absolutely. balance out our lives no matter what this right. environment is. It's like something bad happens in your life, right? Yeah. If, if something bad happens in your life, if you weren't a Christian, you wouldn't have that moment where it feels like you're sitting in a conference room with your conscience and you say, you know what? I can't act on this. And you start praying or something and then you normalize, right? Right. Now, a person that does not have that, the only thing they have, Pastor Paul, is their reactionary period. Yeah. In the time where those ions in their neurological systems are in chaos. So, it's a, so they're going to start acting upon their own chaos internally in their brains. It will cause a heightened state of fear also. And here's the big one. You ready for this? Okay. It will change human perspective from that day forward. Right now, we can't see too much, right? We, we can't. If they know this with electronics and, you know, with uh, subliminal messages and this, that, and the other, they do things like that because we can't see outside of a certain frequency range right well if if the charge changes within our brains um we're going to start perceiving things very differently i mean extremely differently so So when you catch instead of catching something out of the corner of your eye right it's going to be right in front of you i see i see and right now there's a spiritual realm around us but we have no ability to see in it not because it's not there. It's because we don't we don't see in that range, that spectrum. Right. So imagine that spectrum opened up to us. It would change our, it would change our total perspective. Go. Yeah. And we're not talking about five G, folks. We're talking about the sun. No, we're, nope. we're talking about the yes, sun. Right. That's right. Uh, the the and then the Bible. If you go read the uh, the book of Isaiah, chapter twenty four, it talks about a pole shift, the earth the earth upside down creating scattering humanity that's an apocalyptic chapter if i ever read one and that you're saying the sun's pole shifting will also affect the earth uh yeah well very, very because it will start to that's right it'll start to change the electrical field around it now here's the thing say that process took three years okay right just say that the last time they recorded the sun it's it's alterations in polarity uh in, in the course of a month, because it did, it didn't go all the way. It's it started to wink. In the course of a month, they recorded these micro changes of chaos in the upper in the ionosphere, which damaged uh, quite a few things. I believe they recorded over a million different flips, as far as neutral to positive, neutral to negative. Wow! Um, over a million flips, it- and what that means is, is every day that we're in that transition period, people are going to be in chaos. Okay. Right? We don't know how long that's going to last. Matter of fact, but it will cause a person to be in chaos for a very long here's time. What, uh, Na- here's what NASA is saying about this, folks. NASA's Solar Dynamic Observatory revealed a rapid weakening of the magnetic fields in the polar regions of the sun. North and south magnetic poles are on the verge of disappearing. This will lead to a complete reversal of the sun's global mm. magnetic field perhaps yep. before the end of the year now if this happens on earth if this if this were happening on earth there would be widespread alarm past reversals of our planet has caused calamities they're saying this yep. could happen by the end of the year or it could take longer they really don't know but here in the last month or so there's been a significant disappearing of these poles uh, weakening on the sun now, and uh, and you, so that's got to be affecting us here on the earth uh, without yeah, question. It's gonna, it's, it's gonna change. Well, I, I think they know it will happen. Um, yeah, in or around that time by the end of the year, we're in that moment right now. It, it, there is no maybe. It's the process has already begun. They know. They know. And uh, there is an external source which is causing the sun to do some very different things now. Right. So, the, um, we're, we're you talk about brains, and I'm, I, here's a, I, I want to uh, ask this question because earlier we had prayer for we've got several children with brain tumors and leukemias uh, that in a part of our church family here online that people are calling in with these prayer requests that the numbers of people, uh, Mike, I can tell you that have gotten cancers among adults and children is exponentially the, the largest amounts we've ever had here 
uh, of people who are calling and, and writing us and contact saying, look, I got stage four. My wife's got this. My husband's got that. We need prayer. We're sending out prayer blankets everywhere. There's something causing this, okay? Is it the sun? Is it the, <coughs> you know, what, what? Is it the radiation and, and penetrating? There's a matter of fact. There's a report today that says that the ozone layer, the ozone oh, above Antarctica, the hole. There's a hole in the ozone three times the size of Brazil. Does that? I mean, that can't be good. So what's happening here? Well, you know, I, I see it's a combination of things, Pastor, and I cannot help but to notice this one thing. As more and more people deem prayer non-important. Mm. It this, becomes this, more important. These, these plagues are escalating. Yeah. Big time. Yeah. I, I can't help but to see this correlation. Every time the world is thrust into an issue where people are irritated, the same thing happens. The exact same thing happens. The number of the afflicted grows exponentially. Mm. And then every time we go into a crisis and people are worn, they're tired of violence and tired of this, they start praying. All of a sudden, that number drops near zero, and people are once again, uh, you know, back again. So I can't help but to think it's intimately tied to prayer. I, st- I believe it, I, it doesn't matter to me who is who. I believe that the power of our Father through us in this world makes the biggest difference out of everything oh, and i believe sure. as as we as more and more people are just they're just it's almost like pastor well, they're spending more time uh trying to learn about these earthly things than they are spending time with the father in prayer amen and in concern for their fellow man and as a consequence people are not covering people christians cover people who are not Christians, Amen. right? Yes. Christians cover areas, but if they're not praying, then Satan can just, you know, Wreck riddle havoc. that area to pieces. Yeah. And it is, I cannot help but to see that correlation. And I know because Satan is not coming near my habitation. That's just not wherever I go past Paul, there's an unnatural peace. I, I can say that because people say that all the time. Right. But that's because of prayer. It has nothing to do with me. It has everything to do with my prayer life. Amen. And um, if more and more people did that, I do think as a consequence of prayer to this darkness is spreading all over the earth. Yeah, like, Satan cr- could not have his day there's a scripture that says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much not not so there's power in prayer and i mean it's not just a one-time shot deal it's a consistent prayer walk life because that's you right know, because and, all of us should be sick yeah from all, all of the us stuff that's hitting right us now. we should ever want to be sick i mean we could talk real for us all of us should be sick yeah all of us should be people everybody's consuming things they have no idea about they, they don't have chemicals no forever that. is one of the things they say from the food we've been eating and water we've been drinking there's chemicals in our body that are there forever i mean yep. we've been poisoned plastics in your system yeah, yeah. um you know all those Synthetics. polymers are stuck in there but but most importantly there are also the modified insects that are biting people. They have no idea about the insects. What? Whoa, they don't. What? what? Modified. Are genetically modified insects flying all okay. over the place, and people are not taking notice of what's biting them. Okay. Because if they did, they would rebuke the insect. Yeah. They would say, this doesn't look normal. What is this? They don't know. Right? They don't even know what they're doing. They getting... don't pay attention. They're, they're right. not paying attention. Well, we know that we know genetically modified insects was something that was released. We know that Bill Gates and some of the his group were behind a lot of this. Oh my, yeah, he was, but yeah, I'll tell but you there's what, more there's than that. countries, and there, there's uh, a whole I lot more. That. And believe me, sometimes uh, Bill Gates and his organizations have done things that that because they have the security or of secrecy or classification, they're confident nobody can ever find out. All people have to do is begin to observe and compare notes, and they'll start finding out quite a bit. The food that people are eating, if they don't pray over that food, it yeah. should have killed them by now, but it that. didn't. It, right. it be, because the people packaging the food, Pastor, they're finding, well, I can't talk about that, it oh, spoils no. my dinner, but the, the food, right, at least 90% of it is highly tainted. Um, it, it really is highly tainted. The air that we're breathing, there's no way to get pure air back, right? There's no, no way to do that. The water that we're drinking is... Uh, 
not it's not undergoing the process that everybody expects and we're talking about bottled water right, right? because it's the the bottle if they could not add the bottle with the water the water could be okay the, but because of the, the bottle is poisoning contaminated yeah petroleum it's petroleum it's getting <clears throat> and and, and the, so they're they all these altercate they're spraying the cities right yeah. spraying the cities uh they expect to lose what would they say one third of New York is expect to be lost here pretty soon because they cannot maintain the underground infrastructure of New York City. It's not the only place. It's starting to happen in every. Let's talk city. about this. You talked. We talked a little bit last week. I also want to get to these forty-two pairs of rogue objects out that the James Webb uh, Space Telescope found in the constellation of Orion. Forty-two oh, yeah. pairs. Yeah. Right, we want to get that. But before we do that, let's talk for a second. About um, uh, what was we just saying? Wait, it just slipped my mind. St. Cole's infrastructure of New York, white well, lace. Oh, okay, it, uh, the uh, saltwater intrusion. Intrusion. There was a man. I, I've been contacted by some individuals who say that the saltwater intrusion can be, and may be going to be done man-made as well, to the point it could cause the Madrid fault line to go. Is there any? <laughs> Uh, any uh, you know validity to that sure because there are salt mines all on the east coast and the east coast is riddled with catacombs right right and the army corps the army corps of engineers not only is in the mississippi you know helping out there but they're also underneath the east the the entirety of the east coast they're attempting to continue to prop up the east coast that that actually started back in 2001 the army corps of engineers okay. in conjunction with the navy is trying to save the east coast right so there there's a but now they're at a point in passable where things are they're eroded too badly just eroded too no badly. way to do it and, and there are too many too many people have built homes and, and, and all sorts of things uh, in these lands. You can't go, you know, underneath and repair it. Uh, also, because our infrastructure is starting to give way, is specifically water mains all over the place. All they're going to do is leak out of their pipes, erode into some of those um, uh, excavated mines, and then you're going to have large quadrants of places sinking. Uh, parts of the Appalachian Mountains could be marked off in another, I believe they said six months, and people are gonna be forced to get out of certain regions of the Appalachian Mountain chain from, that's all the way from Ohio down to Georgia. And so uh, that's a pretty big, you know, in that's between that area, there, there are certain places that are just, they're, they're not stable, right? They're not stable. Even in the Ozarks, there are places in the Ozarks, same yeah. way, through underground uh, waterways. Now they have, they have a problem with waterways because they have um, there's an underground chamber i guess you could say right below that land that would be perfect if they didn't tamper with the ground but it's too late um and due to small earthquakes and things of that nature that the west coast has received it's rocking places loose underneath the ground right Good. and i know that uh, the madrid fault line yeah. is is something people know about it is by no means the most dangerous fault line for the East Coast and the Midwest. It is not. There are okay. new fault lines in the USA, but they're not really new. They're just newly identified. They were so deep that we couldn't really identify them. Now we have but the they're, technology they're creeping up. Well, they're creeping up, which means those fault lines, the cracks, these cracks are, are starting to breach to the surface. So we're going to have new fault lines we're going to have to deal with. It'd be nice if we just had the named fault lines, but that's not the story. And the USGS is having a conniption fit over these <laughs> of the cracking of the lands. It's, but this is world, you're looking at it's something worldwide. worldwide. Italy, you've always brought up Italy. There's other places. Let me ask you about New York City because when I mean, I've been to New York City and, and Manhattan, it just feels like it's too many huge buildings on on too low a spot. Is that, yep. am I right? I mean, and, and how many of those yeah, pipes right. are going to finally you're go right. and those tunnels underneath there? A lot. A lot. But, you know, they, 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 they can't, there's no way they can repair all that stuff. Yeah, all. That's what I was thinking. There's no way. And the ground is starting to give way. It's starting to give way. So and which they, is, they which is more dangerous like right now, so New Orleans or New York City right now? <clears throat> New York City. That's uh, because of the weight of it, and maybe the, the some. Is there a fault line running through there? Is because there... of what's eroding. Well, keep in mind, in New York, they dug out the ground to put pipes and everything else in there, right? Yeah. So they have already excavated 
the grounds and put a false type of, of um, you know, footer in there or a false type of support system in there. Right. Well, that support system was made out of very old steel. That very old steel has rusted. Yeah. And so large portions of it are missing. There are underground railways. There are quite a few things in New York. And they have lots of parts. There are many parts of New York that are shut off, right, down underground, because the rust has eaten away at the metal. That metal is gone. In certain places, there's no trace of metal where they know they put pipes and gas lines and everything else. And so when you have a complicated situation like that, you can either put in the new stuff, which they can't do because they would have to redesign the whole thing, or you can just simply concrete the whole thing, you know, large blocks of it, is which they have done. But it's not going to stop those, uh, you know, parts of that city from falling in. And what's, the, what's bad, passballs, a person could see a crack or a dip in a sidewalk one day, and by that afternoon, that whole building uh, could be gone because it's very dense there. So yeah. if they have a sinkhole, it's going to be worse there than at any place because of the concentration of people, right? Many more people can be hurt by those things. Uh, but that's something that, you know, they suspect one is a couple weeks off. Uh, sure, they're gonna, they have certain places roped off you can't get to. Uh, but uh, for how long can they keep that? So will we one be earthquake, seeing... <laughs> one <laughs> earthquake, and we'll... that, that's going to shake out loose. So, so building will start collapsing. Yeah, we're going to see it, too. We're yeah. going to see it. Yeah. We're going to see it because yeah. it's not going to take years. It's not going to take years. That's as uh, you know, they're fighting against the clock, and because of the weather, uh, it, just in case people have not noticed, the atmosphere again has the potential to hold a lot of water, and yep. that water is uh, is is uh, very bad. Well, it's going to be twice as bad if we survive this winter. It's going to be twice as bad when the summer. I'm going to bring something up <clears throat> in February of this year. You said we were going to have the hottest summer ever on record. Yes. And you, and you were right. You called it mm. exactly. I mean, we, you said it even have a 130-degree day somewhere, and we did. Yes. It was in Death Valley. They broke all-time record. So you, you called that exactly right. So there has to be some indications, information that you have that you're saying now we're going into a dark winter we're, or we're going to go into a very, very, very cold winter. Is that part of the polarity? Is that part of the – what's causing such well, intense heat and then extreme cold? We have we have an extraordinary changes in the planet due to, well, there are certain cycles. It was always coming, right? It's, just, okay. it's almost not avoidable. It's not from global warming. The entire solar system is undergoing a process, a process that it naturally was going to go through. Um, every planet is heating up beyond belief. Every single last one. In fact, they're going to have to abandon three, about three missions uh, concerning Mars because of the sheer temperature shears that they're, you know, they're going to be reaching. Uh, the craft won't be able to survive uh, some of that, some of the changes that are about to take place. Anyway, as as the solar system heats up, past Paul, and it's happening to the entire solar system, but the real marker is the sun. The sun, the sun, the sun. When the sun changes yeah. along with the planets, you know it's an external cause. It's nothing internal. It's external. external. And, and so I try to point people to that, that the same changes we have here on the Earth at the exact same time, the sun is also yeah. changing. Yeah. So because of that, you know it's not just an Earth-based thing. The little uh, excuse of, of uh, you know, cow farts and alligator um, <laughs> It's not going to hold up. Yeah, it's it's not not going to get done. (laughs) And so the sun itself is about to go through a brand new cycle that nobody ever recorded before. So people, again, I'll say it again, they're going to have to make up new names for some of the new phenomena the sun will undergo. Because, and, and this is my opinion, I'll have to say that, this is my opinion, as we get close to our twin all the photons and most of the energy from the sun is going to begin to be diverted, right? It'll be diverted, which leaves a lot of infrared, a lot of, uh, uh, I'll term it photon lock with certain uh, wave, wavelengths of light to be stuck on the surface of the planet, superheating uh, portions of our atmosphere, almost in a band type process. That will absolutely burn one part of the earth while the other part of the earth is inundated or overwhelmed with moisture. 
And so that's going to cause the highest winds we have ever seen on planet Earth. And that's upcoming in the winter. It'll begin this winter. Some of the highest winds, winds. and some of the heaviest uh, uh, snow, because we could have snow in a place. Imagine a place having four, five, six, seven feet of snow one day, right? The next day is 80 degrees. And everything floods that's, out. That's and then what, it happens a day later, it snows again. That sounds and like Dallas, Texas. Melts. I mean, it sounds well, like that, that could happen for sure. Uh, we've and seen do you know how many people weather. would be people yes. would be hurt? That that'd be devastating. Yeah, that, yeah. That's gonna be more oh, yeah. life lost because we're not really prepared for that type of uh, situation. So here's what this, uh, it says in Revelation 16, in verse eight, it says, "The fourth angel poured out his vial upon the sun." And power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. Men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed the name of God, which had power over these plagues. And they repented not to give him glory. So this was, we were told in the end days that this very thing you're saying is going to happen. But probably way worse than what we've seen it right now. I mean, it's it's coming. It's moving toward that, right? Yeah, I think we'll have flash burn at that time, Pastor Paul. I honestly believe that at that time, during the during the close exchange, that the actual outer atmosphere of the sun will be arced out, shearing the face of the earth at certain times, which means vitrification on mountaintops, uh, on sides of mountains. That's when dirt and rock and sand turn to glass. Yeah. That's when uh, uh, yeah. uh, rocks and everything else transmutes. Has it happened before? You better believe it. There's an entire mountainside they found at the beginning of the year that is glass. Right under that uh, uh, crustal layer is glass. Glass. It's glass. And so um, we're going to have these same situations again. Not only that, but this, uh, some of the changes in the sun are also going to cause extreme volcanism. Right. So the air is going to be it's going to be very difficult to breathe for a lot of people. Ash environment. And, um, so, so, well, what about these 42 pairs of rogue uh, objects that James Webb Space I tells? cannot. What is it's in a, it's in Orion, it's in Orion, okay? Pastor Paul. So, is that the what sweet? What are they doing? <laughs> since they're having disclosure, let's go ahead, let's go ahead. Okay. They've known about Orion yeah. since World War II. Right? Okay. It was, now I have to speak like this, uh, uh, some sort of a book, but during World War II, that's when they found out about the hybrids. Okay. And they looked into Orion. That's when we got all the German scientists and all the warlocks. And just in case people don't yeah, know. Pay, like Operation Werner, Paper Werner Clip. Von Braun. Yeah. Werner yeah. Von Braun. This guy wasn't a worshiper of the living God. No. This guy worshipped the black sun. And yeah. Just so you know that. Yeah. And so anybody who was working for him or doing anything for him, I wouldn't trust anything they say. That's just a small little tidbit there. So we got um, the warlocks and the scientists. Uh, they kind of went hand in hand a little bit. Yeah, they were one and the same. They were. Yeah. They were. They yeah. were high level. All of them were experts in in uh, you know that little witchcraft thing right. they were doing. Right. Uh, anyway, but they were very smart at their craft. Yeah. And they, but during World War II, they found out about that. And they, they told us about Brian, which when all these telescopes began to go forward, was actually to launch bigger telescopes and probes. Why? Because they're trying to verify things, even at that time. Uh, so when the Voyagers went up, they detected perturbations. Something was something that shouldn't have pulled at them, pulled at both of them. So they verified the source of that pull. They've been tracking that ever since. The Vatican tracks it too. And Orion is very active. You can't see how active it is with the naked eye. And this is what they wanted to verify. So I, I, it's just very difficult to believe. Well, if they're telling people that and they know people are going to start looking in that direction, we might want to go ahead and get ready for the introduction of real devils to people. Because that's coming next, when they introduce devils to people. When Christian... Now, now here's something I know. Here's something that was told to me upon my inception okay. of service. That when they introduce, when they start introducing... Uh, the idea of other life forms, they're going to put Christianity on the chopping block. Yeah. Well, uh, that's they go our, hand in hand. Yeah, the that introduction concept. of that subject. Yep. That concept is happening, the, uh, Mike. You know, where yep. 
they started with the Ancient Alien program they've been doing for almost 20 years on the History Channel. They basically are saying that we weren't created by God. And it's working. It's working. People believe working. this. But we were because created even, by aliens. Right. That, that We were seated onto this it's earth working. by aliens. This is such a lie. And I think, I think in worldwide, I think there's a possibility that close to 50% of the earth may actually believe that. That we came from um, aliens. Yeah, more than that, Pastor Paul. Really? Due to re- well, just by data, a lot, yeah, a okay. lot more than that. It's more like it's more like uh, it's more like the probably probably over. Well, I know it's over three quarters of the earth. Over seventy. The bad part is the bad part is this year alone they were talking to Christians, people who believe in Christ, and even they say, well, it's plausible that you know. I'm, it uh, can't so be plausible. But to- see, that's programming. I that's know. Pro- this, I know. This programming began. And, and consequently, that's why I do not, I do not, I will not elevate humanity anywhere. God will stay on his throne in my life. But um, people you mentioned, are, are these, these. I'm sorry, go, go ahead, ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No, no, I, I don't want to forget you mentioned I was gonna say when these our strange, train goes by, but go ahead. These strange ideologies that people are coming up with, um, even AI will be utilized to promote these strange theories. Okay. You're going to find that they'll cut most things out of the narrative, but they're going to keep these um, theory creators, they're going to keep them operational, even supporting certain ideas they have. Wow. Okay. You, you mentioned one spot there uh, that when our, when our twin comes by, we're going to mm-hmm. experience. So obviously it's our, our binary system. It's, you know, we, we call it planet X or, you know, people call it different right. things, but, but it's, Obviously, it's coming, and and that's got to be partly why the sun and, and 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 the Earth and the Mars and different planets are being severely affected. Um, how far are we from this passing? We're not far. Okay. What what can we expect? We're not far. Well, from that from that one point where it's absolutely real close. One thing we'll see. Now, it's not going to be close where you know it's going to uh, just utterly devastate everything. It will cause a photonic exchange. And what that is, is what they have observed already. When you have a binary system or more, when some of the, uh, some of the colder stars get near the yellow or, or white active stars, there's a photonic exchange, which means all light, heat, and everything else from one sun is diverted away from its orbiting uh, satellites or planets onto the other one. So the, the darker star right the darker sun the twin recharges from the bright star okay and it absorbs everything from the bright star that's not anytime good. a cold star approaches a bright star it recharges and it sucks up everything because gravity gets much more dense yeah. from the um, you know the one that's passing by and it just so happens they found three systems that are very similar to ours right okay uh, uh, it's so similar that even the masses are similar. So when you rerun the formulas in celestial mechanics, the mass that is missing, when you calculate inertia of the movement of everything in our system, it is compensated only if you have Earth or or, or our solar system in a binary system. That's the only way the perturbations also, you have to make no, right now they have to make uh, additional external adjustment calculations for the moon they have to do this for the planets they have to do this for everything if you recalculate everything in a binary system you do not have to adjust the formulas now what do you think that is you you don't have to adjust the formulas for saturn for neptune for jupiter for um uh, us the earth for the moon you don't have to recalculate anything when it's a binary system when you do the math for a binary system okay because a lot of people don't believe we live in a binary system. No, they don't. Everything, everything has a counter formula that adjusts it so things work. So in other words, celestial mechanics for our system does not work. It doesn't work. You have, have to, to have adjust, a balance. Throw numbers has, in there and everything else. There has to be yeah. some kind of a binary system to counteract the sun we have. Or, or, or where there would be no stability. There'd be no stability in go. the orbits, right? There you go. Because, com- because uh, uh, true celestial mechanics will not ever confirm that our solar system is the way it is. Only when you recalculate for a binary system wow. do celestial formulas work. 
Otherwise, they don't work. And you have to make small adjustments here and there and everywhere. Wow. This is really some good stuff, folks. So God's plan, uh, his creation is wonderfully made, just like we are. Uh, Lucifer, those trying to wreck the party. We're in it. We're in the down, it's the stretch run. Uh, every demon in hell is trying to come out of the pit of hell to, to come against us. We better have greater as he. We better have Jesus Christ in our life, be pleading the blood of Christ, be in prayer constantly, lifting each other up in the love of God because we're going to be bombarded with just about every force of nature and man made forces, every electronic force, every sublineal force message ever demonic entity uh but we can we're still gonna win if we hang on to jesus i mean that's what i'm hearing you say that's right that's right <laughs> so it comes down to that right at the end of the day we will really if if we can stay on that if we can stay on that walk of faith uh yep. it is the lord who will deliver all of us and well he said it he said he'll finish the work he began in us amen he, he will fa- he's the finisher of our faith so all we have to do is honestly choose but that's why I give one more caution, folks. Don't let, don't agree with the darkness operating in the world, which is to say, agree with Christ, not with anything else. Agree with Jesus, not with anything else, because Amen. that's what Satan wants to corrupt us. He can't destroy us. He can't kill us. He he doesn't have the power nor authority. But what he can do is trick us into agreeing with him. And I, every time a person enters into sin, they they are choosing to agree with darkness, right? When they willingly do that, uh, intentionally do that. So uh, do the opposite. Don't just resist him at all costs. You know, Amen. don't agree with him Amen. because you'll empower him. Don't don't empower him by your agreement with him. Amen. Mike, I got I got to do filming with you next week. Uh, yes. Okay. So we'll get that done. I got to travel we'll Monday, done. so maybe Tuesday. I'll have Heidi send you an email, and, okay. and let's lock that down. we got to get that done. Okay. And uh, we'll the, do. the webinar is Friday, folks. So we're one week away from final countdown, Road to Revelation. You just got a little sampling of some of the Revelation knowledge from Mike. And Mike, huh, what's that, Heidi? Uh, we had an email problem. We was trying to contact you, Mike. We never it, – it bounced back at us. Did it? Yeah. Okay, let me – let me. Uh, no, I do programming sometimes, so – See what you can Let me do. Fi- I'll fix it. Yeah, so one contact her and so we can do that. Okay, that uh, you guys can also pass ball. You have my text uh, thing also. You can always use that. Okay. okay, okay, we'll do that. We'll get together. Okay, Mike, thank you so much for tonight. We really appreciate it. again for you taking the time to be with us. We really do appreciate. It's always an honor. Thank you, brother. God bless you too. God bless. All right, Mike from the world, folks. Fascinating conversation tonight but all of it was from we just read the scriptures i started out with all the different stuff from revelation and then he can help confirm it based on knowledge uh scientific uh understanding everything that is going on and yeah it has an explanation but there's always has to be an understanding that It's all still about us. We were made in God's image and likeness, and we can love Jesus if we'll accept that love and his gift of eternal life through his precious blood at Calvary. And maybe you're watching right now. You say, Pastor Paul, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to get through the apocalypse. You won't do it without Jesus. Let me help you in advance. You won't. You can prep all you want. You can build an underground mansion uh you can bombard it with 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 steel you can have the best ventilation system you can have 50 years of food set up in advance medical supplies you will not make it without christ but with christ you're the winner you're on the winning side he will not leave us he will not forsake us and oh by the way the greatest life the greatest the greatest joy the greatest peace the greatest purpose of life you'll find in jesus christ and then life is worth living it really really is and if you're watching right now and you're not saved i'm I'm gonna ask you and don't forget i'm gonna be preaching sunday here at solid rock uh church in birmingham and you can actually see that online uh at solid rock youtube youtube channel if you want to watch that live that's if we make it to sunday that's if time don't run out before then. And, you know, I never, if Christ wants to come back, 
I'm ready to go. I'm taking the first bus out of here, okay? But until he comes, we're going to occupy. Take ground. Make a difference. And if you're watching right now and you're not saved, I would love to do this. I would love to pray with you. I would love for you to know that you know that you know that you've made things right with God and you want your name written in that Lamb's book of life because if it doesn't get there, you're not going. There's no other way. There's no other plan. There's no back door. There's no climb up some other way. Jesus said you can't come in that way. You'll be like a thief and a robber. You've got to come through the door, and he's the door. I'm going to play a song. If you'd like to type right now in the chat room, I want to be saved. I would, I would want to pray with you, and everyone here would, would love to pray with you. It's a, it would be the greatest decision of your life. You can do that right now if you'll call on the name of the Lord. Just type, I want to be saved. Tony wants to be saved. Praise God. A million hopes, a million dreams. I've carried them all over this land. And I keep holding to the promise, even though I'm not a righteous man. I can see the highway ahead It hums an old familiar tune And I'm not out here for the righteous But the wounded ones So they can come home too I saw Mark wants to be saved also A million hopes, a million dreams I've carried them all over this land. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And I'll share them with you. We'll see you, Dave. Even though I'm not a righteous man. Dave, we see you and Tony and Roger. Mark. And my hope is in forgiveness. It's a dream I have for all. Come on, you can do it, folks. You don't have to be righteous to qualify. No, you don't. Just answer Just when answer he calls. And he's calling you right now. When he calls. When the Lord calls now, now. Lord, I know that none are righteous, <laughs> but I'm held in your nail pierced hands. And I'll sing about perfection, even though I'm not a righteous man. Because he's, because Christ is perfect. A million hopes, a million dreams. all over this land and I'll share them with you even though I'm not a righteous man and I'll share the Lord with you even though I'm not a righteous man Because there's only one that's righteous. And that's the Lord. You're made righteous through Christ Jesus. Don't be ourselves. We're not. We're saved by grace through faith. I'm going to play one more song. I feel led of the Lord. I feel like I need to do this. That somebody else, somebody else is so close to coming to Jesus Christ for salvation. And I want you to have it. I want you to be saved. Many people are already typing, I want to be saved. And I think there's, I think there's another dozen more. There's right on the fence. Don't, 
don't wait too late. He was saying grace over a Tuesday blue plate special when the man in the next booth said, don't you watch TV? Don't you know that God's a myth? I hate to see you waste your breath. There ain't no use in you talking to a ghost that don't exist. Praying man said amen and looked up from his plate and said, you may not talk to God right now, but there's gonna come a day. If you're a farmer in the field, praying for the rain, or you curse him at the gravesite, cause he called a loved one's name. You can thank him, you can blame him, either way you're gonna face him. Whether you believe in him or not, in the end, everybody talks to God. Oh, that's right. The man in the booth went quiet. Cause he didn't have a comeback So he shrugged it off and he paid his tab He shuffled out the door And the praying man he prayed For the man who drove away Hoping he would see the light Before it got too late But how was he to know he touched an unbeliever's soul Who got that conversation Two red lights down the road If you're a farmer in the field Praying for the rain Or you curse him at the gravesite Cause he called the loved one's name You can thank him, you can blame him Either way, you're gonna face him Whether you believe in him or not Cause in the end Everybody talks to God Everybody talks to God You can thank him you can blame him either way you're gonna face him whether you believe in him or not because in the end everybody talks to god thank you lord everybody talks to god Praise the Lord. Everybody talks to God. We see you, John. A bunch of folks coming to Jesus tonight. There's another one. Now listen, Pastor Paul. Pastor Paul can't save you, but i tell you what I can do. We can pray together and if you'll just pray to Jesus, and if you'll ask him to forgive you of your sins, he's waiting for you. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Man, I've messed up. And I want to get this thing right. I want to repent of my sins tonight. I want to be honest with you, God, that I need a Savior. I don't want to die like this. I don't want to be left behind. I'm calling on your name. I'm calling on Jesus. I'm repenting of my sins tonight. I am confessing my sins to you, Lord, and I'm saying forgive me and cleanse my soul and wash me in your precious blood, Jesus, I, I, because I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you died on the cross 
for my sins and the sins of the world. I believe you rose from the grave, that you're alive, that you conquered sin, sickness, poverty, and spiritual death. I believe that you ascended to heaven. You're sitting at the right hand of God, waiting to come back and get us. You are coming back again. So right here, right now, tonight, by faith in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved, I'm saved, I'm saved, I'm healed, I'm delivered, I'm set free, I'm born again, I'm saved in Jesus, I'm saved in Jesus, I am saved in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Jesus. I want to encourage you tonight. Welcome to the family. Your names right now are being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. There is more rejoicing in heaven if just one person got saved tonight than all the rest of us that know the Lord. But you, you got them. There's you. You just received eternal life through Jesus Christ. Now I would like to encourage you to get baptized. To find a pastor, find a church, or let us know. Come on down to Florida. I'll baptize you. Hey, let's just do this thing. Let's get things right. And let me tell you, you you say, well, why do I need to be baptized? Well, it is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist baptized Jesus. Jesus said, go ahead and do it, John. Suffer to be so. We got to fulfill all of righteousness. This is the death, burial, and resurrection plan. Jesus even said, you got to be born of the water and of the spirit. So, hey, let's get this done. But tonight you are saved. Tonight you receive you know, the cleansing power of the blood of the Lamb, and that has saved your soul. By his grace are you saved. Through faith, it's not a gift of God. I mean, excuse me, not of ourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, at least any man should boast. We can't save ourselves. It is a true gift from the Lord, his son, Jesus Christ. If you need a Bible, I'd love to send you one. Just send an email to MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. I got that somewhere around here. Just text, just send an email to MissZD01 at Hotmail.com, okay? And say, hey, I need a Bible. Let me send you one for free. I'll just send it to you for free. We'll pay the postage. I'll get it to you. If there's anybody sick out there that needs a connection, a contact, with our faith, with your faith, an anointed prayer cloth prayed over and sent to you, agreeing with you in prayer that God will heal your body, let us know. Send that same email to MissZD01 at Hotmail.com. If somebody is really in, in, in needs a miracle, really sick, you know, send me and send that same email. So we'll send a blanket prayed over bless you with it and believe God for your miracle because God is in the miracle working business I hope you've enjoyed the broadcast tonight I'll be preaching Sunday here in Birmingham Alabama at Solid Rock Church if you want to come please do it Bishop Larry Ragland and his wife Sandy would love to see you I would certainly me and Heidi would love to see you and then I'll be flying back into Florida and I'll be preaching the following Sunday under the big tent there in the villages of Florida. God bless all of you. We love you guys. We'll see you right here on the coming apocalypse.